on the record. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. So today is the May 17th, 2023 meeting of the Albany Board of Review. So the hearing is being held via video conference call WebEx at the following location, the New York State Department of State, One Commerce Plaza, 99 Washington Ave, conference room, we're at 1135 today uh, in Albany, New York, 12210. So the time is now 9.04 a.m. and the hearing is officially open. <clears throat> So the members of the board are Ms. Laura Ryer to my right, uh, Mr. Andy Ellis, Ms. Jackie Coons down on the left, and then Mr. Jared Bringer. And my name is David Abramo. Uh, I'm the chairman. Um, and then also from the Department of State, we have Mr. Dan Ferrelli and Mr. Uh, Chris is also on the line. I forgot your last name. Sorry, Chris. Jensen. 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 Chris Johnson. And John Lindbeck. Johnson. <clears throat> so well, we're going to now hear the scheduled petitions for the day. When you speak, please address the board and give your name and the title and your legal address so that our court reporter can have all the information requested. Also, please speak clearly and try your best. Try not to talk over one another for accurate recording. We may have stop to we may have to stop time to time uh, to consult with our technical staff. <clears throat> so, in making comments the to the board, you have reached the maximum time permitted for recording your message. If you're satisfied with the message, press Please 1. Sure to listen to your message, press 2. To erase and re-record, press 3. Is that on our side of things? I have no idea. Um, that if seems you're satisfied with the message, the press 1. To listen to your message, press 2. Host. To erase and re-record, press 3. It looks like it's coming from Barbara McLachlan. Okay. If you're satisfied with the message, press 1. To listen to your message, press 2. To erase and re-record, press 3. Okay. Sorry you're having trouble. Your message has been sent. Please try again later. Goodbye. Bye. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Glad we're on that. <laughs> okay. So we'll keep, yeah, we'll keep going. So in making comments to the board, please provide a descriptive narrative of the matters referring to exhibits to enable the court reporter to enter these into the record. <clears throat> so the first petition for today is the matter of petition number 2023-0192, the petitioner of State Farm Blueberries. <clears throat> Star. Star Farm, I'm sorry, Star Farm Blueberries, thank you. So the petition pertains to the construction of a building of occupancy groups uh, A2, Assembly Banquet Hall, Reception Hall, Construction 5B, wood framed, unprotected construction. It's one story in height, 5,222 square feet in gross floor area, and it's known as the Stargazer Hall. It's located at 2478 Galway Road, Town of Galway, County of, Schenectady, County of Saratoga, State of New York. The petitioner is appealing the determination of the code enforcement official regarding the applicability of the code section 19 NYCRR part 1225, the building code of New York State, section 303.3, which has to do with the assembly group of A2, which reads that A2 occupancy includes assembly uses intended for food and drink consumption, including banquet halls. <clears throat> the petitioner believes the proper code section to be applied to this building is the following, 19 NYCRR part 1225, the building code in New York State section 303.4, which is assembly group A3, which reads that A3 occupancy includes assembly uses intended for worship, recreation, or amusement, and other assembly uses not classified elsewhere in group A. Furthermore, the petitioner has offered um, that if that appeal fails, the petitioner is seeking relief from 19 NYCRR part 1225, the fire code in New York State, section 903.2.1.2 for a group, two, group A2 occupancy, which reads, an automatic sprinkler system shall be provided throughout stories containing group A2 occupancies and throughout all stories from the group A2 occupancy to and including the levels of exit discharge serving the occupancy where one of the following conditions exist. Number one, the fire area exceeds 5,000 square feet. 
Or number two, the fire area has an occupant load of 100 or more. Uh, this petitioner is specifically seeking relief from the requirements that a structure with fire air exceeding 5,000 square feet and containing occupant load of 100 or more <clears throat> be required to contain an automatic sprinkler system. <clears throat> that concludes the introduction of the case. So then at this time, I'm going to say that the uh, board will open up discussion to allow the petitioners to present their case to the board. Uh, please, again, state your name for the record for the court reporter as you speak. Um, and at this time, you may open it up to the petitioner. So thank you for being here. So this time, yeah, yeah, you may, you you may start your presentation. Okay. Uh, yeah. Richard Malik, uh, professional engineer in New York State. Uh, address? Yeah, yeah please. Uh, please. 10 Sheffield Drive in Clifton Park, New York, 12065. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. So yeah, go ahead. You can you review the case for us. Tell us, ask, tell us why you're you believe. Um, I guess we'll start with the appeal first. Right. Give us that, and then we'll kind of work our way through here. Okay. Um, you already had the basics. You gave out the basics on the, the building. Um, it's essentially it is constructed, not finished, pending outcome of uh, the appeal and the, and the variance. Um, as you mentioned, first piece is to appeal the A2, 2, and A3. If that wouldn't uh, be acceptable, then we, we propose the, the variance for the sprinkler requirement. So the basis on the A2 um, is, is essentially, if you focus on the New York State piece, <clears throat> the, uh, the town of uh, Galway's code enforcement officer also had talked to someone in the state his name is in the, uh, the tech bulletin there. When you read that, which focuses on um, food service, um, in that tech bulletin, it mentions a key element in determining the appropriate classification is the primary intended purpose of the space. And for group A2, again, right from the tech bulletin, group A2 occupancy includes assemblies intended for food and or drink consumption. Uh, taverns, bars, restaurants, nightclubs. So when you, when I look at that piece of that, that clearly is, there was some discussion in terms of where the food was prepared, that type of thing. There is no kitchen, there's no commercial cooking equipment here, although it was stated that that wasn't um, a key element. Um, but, it, but essentially, if the petitioner, um, the proposed use of the space was initially, it's initially for a wedding facility, also had inquiries on uh, family reunions, celebrations of life. These are essentially, these are, these are social functions that could occur theoretically without any food consumption or drink consumption. You could, you could have those events. Those events are focused on those particular social type, um, community type functions. It's not intended as an open restaurant. That's not the primary purpose. So. One, uh, the first piece is to, is to appeal that with respect to the technical bulletin, that if you applied the technical bulletin, you would come up with a facility that's not primarily intended for food and drink consumption. It doesn't have the characteristics of taverns, bars, nightclubs, restaurants, commercial kitchens, that type of thing. Um, although there is going to be some food or drink consumption based on a, a catered arrangement. So that would be the first. And then also as substantiation, I included um, some information from the, I know, I know it's not directly relevant, uh, however, from a su substantiation standpoint, the uh, NFPA life safety code. The life safety code after the station nightclub fire in 2003 created a higher risk category. Um, their threshold actually is even lower than the 100 person threshold, it's 50 persons. And that would be those higher risks are included uh, dance halls, nightclubs, bars, restaurants, assembly occupancies with festival seating. So if uh, those that are familiar with the station nightclub, which I assume uh, most of us are, um, that was the occupant load there was almost twice. The size of the facility is relatively uh, similar to the South Farm Blueberries, 4,500, 5,000 square feet. That was 450 people in that uh, 
and that venue um, down to about 10 square foot uh, per person. The uh, use of Star Farm blueberries is an unconcentrated, uh, based on the 286 occupant load, person occupant load, that's 15 square foot per person. So if you look, it's, it's not a festival seating and it doesn't have these other characteristics, the dance hall, nightclubs, bars, restaurants. Uh, some of this is similar to the New York State Code in terms of bars, restaurants. So from that standpoint, um, the, the, the characteristics of the hazards are not in that higher risk category. Um, and that, so if you combine the, 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 the view, which is focused on the food service in the A2, A3, and the International Building Code and the New York State Building Code, you know, the facility is not intended for uh, food and drink consumption. It's intent, the primary uh, um, intended use is uh, social type functions, as I mentioned. And then you can also use to support that um, the way the Life Safety Code views that, which is similar to those types of high-risk facilities, um, similar in characteristics to that station nightclub uh, situation when they made the changes down to 15-person threshold in the life safety code. So uh, there might be some small uh, similarities with these two higher risk occupancies, the A2 in the New York State Code. But broadly, um, if you look at those two, it doesn't, it doesn't have the, the extensive uh, similar characteristics to either the A2 or uh, the high risk in the life safety code. So the uh, in the life safety code, it would be a 300 person threshold for the sprinklers, which is the same as the A3. Um, for the New York State Building Code, it would be the 300 person threshold. So the Star Farm Blueberries facility would be in that um, regular risk category, for lack of a better term. So okay. that would be the uh, those two elements uh, to um, support an A3. Um, Rather than the okay. Any questions from the board members as we discuss the appeal first? <clears throat> and hold on, before we do that, I was just noticing, I don't think on the record we have all the participants here for this case, so why don't we start with you on the end? I know you already introduced, introduced yourself. Ira Dorsey, Dorsey Construction, uh, 22 Colomer, C-O-L-L-A-M-E-R Road, Malta, New York. One two zero two zero. Great, thank you. Good. Oh, you already introduced Mr. Malik. Yes, I'm Joanne Pulaski Fetter, um, two four seven eight Galway Road, Galway, New York one two zero seven four. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, I'm Charles Fetter, same address two four seven eight Galway Road in Galway one two zero seven four. Thank you. Okay, so then let's open it up for the board members only ask questions about the appeal. Um, any questions for that? So what is the ideal use of the building going to be if it's not going to be for banquet type use? I can address that. Your name the ideal use. This is Jackie. Jackie, thank you. <laughs> yes, this is Charles Fetter speaking. Uh, the ideal use is primarily a wedding venue. So people come there to get married, they have their ceremony there, then they move on to cocktails, your typical wedding scenario. They come, they get married, they enjoy their time there. The caterer will bring in food. There is food and drink, but it's not, we don't make it there, the caterer brings it in. So I don't know if you've been to a wedding, but it's that type of scenario where they, they come, they get married, they have a good time, and they leave. But there will be seating, and they, there will be some type of service, wait staff service. So people's main focus won't be on one thing in the building. They'll be oh, sitting and talking amongst themselves. Oh, absolutely. There's a few different components to it. Like there's a cocktail hour where people would go and socialize. And then they would move to the seating, which is either a round table or a farm style table where they have their dinner. And then they can go outside to the fire pit or go back in to, uh, to dance. I have it sometimes a DJ or a band. So it's that kind of thing. Did that answer So the reason that you're saying it's not like a restaurant is just because it doesn't have a kitchen? 
Well, no, well, you don't come there primarily to eat. You really come there primarily to celebrate a wedding. So you do eat food at a wedding, but it isn't like food is prepared there. That's not the main focus is to go there to eat. You go there for a wedding. Does that answer it? Yes. Okay. This is Andy Ellis, um, board member. What stage of construction is this at? Right now, uh, the building is erected but it's not up to code. We have some insulating to do yet, and um, the, naturally the fire protection, but it is erected, the, you know, the roof is on, the walls are in, you know, it's got a windows. It looks like a building. There's a floor, you know, a concrete floor. What's the primary heating source? Uh, the primary heating is radiant heat. There's a propane, and that's in floor. Good evening. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Jared Barringer from the board. Uh, the is there a constructed bar? Is there a bar in the... There is a bar. It can be moved, but there is one that's it's not like built into the floor. But there is a bar area. And why were there no permits pulled prior to the construction? That was a mistake on my part. Uh, both times 2015 and... Yeah, and originally, the original building I put there were a blueberry farm. So I built this. I got a repurposed friend of mine was knocking down his pole barn. I said, I don't want to see it go in a dumpster. I could use it to park my equipment in. So I put that pole barn up and that worked good. And then we decided to, uh, people in our blueberry farm said, this is a good spot for a wedding. So we attached a tent to the pole barn and started to have a couple weddings there and it was fun. So then at that point we said, we should really have another building. So I made a major error and just said, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and build it. That was a mistake. Okay. I should have followed all the procedure, but I did. And no parts of those buildings before being constructed went through the plan review process. That's exactly correct. Okay. And then will the, like the constructed bathrooms and so on that have already been put in in play that would not meet the amount of occupant load? That's. Um, I think it will. That's five stall, and that was a. Originally, it was a uh, restroom trailer that I had built, and, it, and because I didn't like the ones that you rented because they were too tall, so I made my own that lowers down onto the ground so you could just take one step and get in. That's now attached to the building, but there are five stalls, one ADA, you know, two stalls for women and two for men. The plans that were submitted, I'm yeah. sorry, this is Laura from the board. Uh, the plans that were submitted to us only show three. Correct. One. A one-holer men's, one-holer women's, and a one-holer ADA. Um, that's not Three exactly. entryways, excuse me. Three doorways, but two of the three have two stalls in them. Okay. Yes. yes. Definitely not with the drawing show. No. And then, so there's not been any county septic approval, any part of that? No, no we're, we're just reviewing that now. So we're, we have our site plan, and we are be, we have a meeting. Uh, we're actually ready with our plans to submit, and that happens next month with the planning board. So this is Laura from the board. Um, when was the addition completed? What year? The addition? Yeah. We, well, it's not completed yet, but we were able to get it closed in, and last fall, September 24th, I believe, somewhere in September. Yeah, okay. And we've already had some events there. We've had a couple of events there. I promised a couple people that they could get married there, and I had to keep my word to them, mm -hmm. so I did, and, you know, now I'm taking, you know, severe repercussions for steps that I did not follow. I had showed these people uh, 
prospective couple came to me, and I there was nothing there at what my old pole barn. And I said, I'm building a building. I have this great idea. And they came, they looked, and they said, wow, this is great. I am, we love it. We're going to do it. There was no, I didn't even have a, a real blueprint or a picture. They just, I walked them and showed them the invisible building, and we just kind of took a walk through, and then they visualized it. And I gave them my word and to do it, and my word is my bond. So I fulfilled that with them, and they were completely happy and posted things on Facebook and, you know, did things, you know, if I really thought I was doing something wrong, I never would have posted anything on any platform. But I didn't really think it was doing anything catastrophically wrong. Mm -hmm. So they ended up having a great time, uh, exceeded their expectations, and, you know, it was good for us to get it done and make them happy. So now we're kind of doing this whole process in reverse and didn't really know about the sprinkler system requirements or any of this until... I called the town supervisor and then called in the uh, building inspector. He informed us of that. And then I said, oh boy, we've got some work to do now. So that kind of landed us here. Okay. So I'm just curious, how many events have you had? We've had two weddings. Two weddings. Uh, um, two, uh, pri and two private parties. Yep. Okay. We, I play drums with a band, so we have... Uh, or music people so we invited my band guys to come over and we all had a good time there and then we got one party members that were in attendance for the band jam said geez my fiance his birthday is coming up i'd love to have a party for her so we did that for her okay. and did any of those events have no food or drink pardon me did any of those events have no food or drink no, they those events people brought their own. their own it was a byob mm -hmm. so people would bring their cooler of beer and whatever they wanted to eat. Usually it was a dish of some type and they shared it that way. Okay. This is Dave from the board. Is there any type of event that you can imagine that would not have food or drink at this facility? Well, that's a good Probably question. Not. Probably not. People like to eat, you know, so, cool. you know, at, at some point, um, like on a private parties, we've had a food truck come in and that kind of a thing, that always went over pretty well. Or a lot of things are as simple, you know, bring a dish. Mm -hmm. So people bring a thing of lasagna or, you know, that kind of a thing. May I speak? Sure. So I, I it appears that food and drink might be an issue. I <laughs> agree that most every event would have food and drink. Um, we don't supply the drink. Uh, we have insurance for every event, and they're all private. There's never been an event that we've had that has not been a private event. Therefore, we feel that it's, you know, it's we're choosy about who we invite. Um, my husband and I don't drink, uh, and, but we know that at a function, everybody wants a little something to drink. Um, so, but it's, knock on wood, it's been safe. We've had no problems or issues. Um, the, we do have an area in the Stargazer building. We call it a prep kitchen, but no cooking happens out of that kitchen. So the caterers can, there's a space for them to use, but the food comes usually prepared off-site, not within our building. This is Jared from the board. How many events do you have planned in the future already? Well, we have probably three or four, you know, pending. Should all of this fly, you know, then we're we're hopeful that these will go on. But we're we're talking to people. We we show yeah. the place a lot. Right. You have open advertisement on your website and things like that. Correct? We do. We promote. You know, Andy Ellis from the board. Um, what kind of accessibility is there around the entire building? Does it slope off? No, it's completely it, flat. It's completely flat. Is yes. there sidewalks all the way around the building? There's there's no sidewalks yet. It's nice grass. So there's 
Um, there's a nice driveway type gravel thing and then nice, um, there's no steps to get in. So there's a concrete slight elevation ramp to get in the front door, but it's all hard ground. And eventually we want to put pavers in and do more, but we wanted to get through this hurdle first before we continued on. Are we doing just the appeal right now? Or are we asking? I'd like to determine. I think we should. What's that? Yeah. The appeal? Yep. Yeah, I think we'd like to focus on the appeal. And then once we figure out okay. whether or not that occurs, then we can move on to discuss some okay. specifics about the sprinkler system. If we if we yeah. don't want to grant the appeal. Yeah, I just want to know how to. Yeah, we want to get into that. Yeah, I'm, I'm good on the appeal part. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions from the board as far as the appeal goes? No. So the distinctions in the code is certainly around that food and drink, just for your knowledge, between an A2 occupancy and an A3 occupancy. That's, and to Mr. Melbeck's point, uh, Malik's point, um, there's a technical point that tries to describe what that might entail, whether or not if a venue has food and drink consistently or whether or not it's used without food and drink and sometimes there's food and drink that. And there's, of course, the reason why we're sitting here talking about the appeal, um, a bit of interpretation there. So that's what the board were going to talk. Does it make sense to the board? Do we need to go in deliberation about the appeal? Do we need to or just move on? Um, I guess we need to figure out. I'm ready to vote. I don't know if you want to talk before we all vote or if you just want to see how the vote goes. No, I don't, I don't need to, to talk I separately. To, I don't need to talk. Okay, we're all in agreement that, yeah. yeah. So um, the board does not feel that the uh, the appeal is accurate and we do believe that this is an A2 occupancy based on the idea that there is food and drink consumption at this facility consistently. Um, any venue or any event that you have there is going to entail food and drink. So that in the code is definition of A2 occupancy. Is there anybody from the board that that disagrees with that assumption? No, I just want to add, this is Jackie, that it's not so much about the food and drink and where it comes from and what it is. It's the focus of the people. And when you have a community hall or any of those other A3 type of uses listed, the assumption is that people's focus are on one thing or that it's easy to get their focus in an emergency. So if you're at church and something happens, the pastor can alert the whole crowd to an emergency. If you're in an art gallery, they probably can do some form of an announcement on the loudspeaker. When you have food and drink consumption at multiple tables, you have people who are focusing only on what's going on at their table. You have a lot of ambient noise. And it's very difficult for the people in charge of the safety of those patrons to get everybody's attention in the event of an emergency. So I think just focusing on the food and drink might have been a little misleading and it's it's more about how people are functioning within the space. So if based on what examples you've given of what's occurred in the space and what's probably going to occur in the space, it sounds like for the most part people are going to have mixed focus and attention and there's not going to be something like this where everybody is focused in the same place. So that's why I agree that we should not grant the appeal. I think the board is unanimous about the appeal um, and that this is an A2. We will um, take what we'll do at the end if board's okay with this is we'll just include that in our conclusions at the end. I don't think we need to go through a formal vote right now. No. I'll make sure that that's included though. So it's for on the record. Are we allowed to do it that way? Or do we have to vote on the appeal first? That would be a Dan question. Dan, are you okay if we don't? If, do we have to vote on the appeal first, or do we? Can we move on to? Chairman, I was thinking you guys would want to vote on it, j just to okay. get that on the record that you know sure. how you all sure. stand on that appeal. Thank sure. you. Yeah, let me do that. <clears throat> Great. So then, let's. So we're going to do a little bit of formality here, and then we'll move into the next part of the case, okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> so
So in the matter of petition number 2023-0192, with regarding the appeal of the determination of the code enforcement official, in accordance with the, um, the discussion and based on the information presented and testimony given, the board denies the appeal of the petitioner and therefore sustains the determination of the code, building code enforcement official. Insufficient evidence has been provided to warrant revising the determination of the code enforcement official. Is there a motion for the board? I'll make a motion, Andy. Do I have a second? Yes. Jared seconds, thank you. I'll pull, now pull the board. Those in favor of the motion, say yay, and those opposed, say yay. Um, Ms. Coons? Yeah. Mr. Ryder, or Ms., Mr. Ellis, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Ryder. Yay. And Mr. Berenger. Yeah. And uh, the chairman also votes yay. That's five yays and zero nays and the, um, the appeal is denied. <clears throat> so we'll now move on to the second part of the case, what has to do with the um, request for a variance. Um, and I'll recap that. The um, petitioner now requests a variance to 19 NYCRR part 1225. Um, the, Fire Code of New York State, Section 903.2.1.2. That has to do with a great group A2 occupancy <clears throat> that requires the use of fire sprinklers if the fire area exceeds 5,000 square feet or if the fire area has an occupant load of 100 or more. So at this time, I'd like to open the case up and allow the petitioners to discuss the request for that variance and describe the building with regarding that variance. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, Richard Malik again. <clears throat> okay, so we, we, we recognize the, the A2 um, <clears throat> classification, uh, and that's why we had put together the, um, the variance with respect to the sprinkler system requirement. So in the variance application, we included two bases for this. For the for the uh, potential variance, one is uh, an unre uh, unreasonable economic and financial burden, and two is that there exists an alternative approach, which would achieve the life safety objective of code. So, um, let me just go get the numbers in terms of the economics, uh, the financial aspects um, that we outline in Exhibit Two. So, total construction cost, uh, project cost to date, two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. The sprinkler system alone, um, a $45,000 estimate that's included. Um, that alone may not be excessive. The, the issue with this particular location is there's no municipal water. So we don't have a water supply with, obviously, there's no volume, there's no pressure. Um, so we've been, we would have to, the petitioner would have to develop a, a water supply on site. So typically that's gonna be a pump and tank arrangement um, could be above ground, could be below ground. So uh, we've included some estimates of uh, the pumping equipment, um, about $50,000, and we included a fiberglass in-ground tank. Um, uh, it's uh, 97, I wrote, uh, I got 97,280 for the combination of the water tank pump. But that doesn't include uh, installation costs on that. Um, we have to supply, one. the pump's got to have to have power, uh, so we could either do electric, there is no, the pumps in that side, it's very difficult to do a, like a single phase, it's uh, very small uh, electric drive pumps or single phase, so generally it's going to be a three phase, which they don't have, so it's development of, if it was going to be electric drive, we'd have to develop the three phase <coughs> power. The alternative is to go diesel drive, which the diesel engine is going to be quite a bit more expensive, as well as the fuel supply, and it adds quite a bit in terms of the maintenance uh, to ensure that the diesel remains reliable. So there's also estimates there for the electrical. We, we left this as electrical equipment installation, um, the electric drive pump, and then equipment materials and labor for excavation infrastructure work. So. Uh, I didn't include, when we put this together, we didn't include, we didn't do some present value on maintenance costs, but it's not insignificant, uh, particularly on the diesel drive that requires uh, weekly running that pump, 
um, the maintenance on the engine itself as opposed to the electric motor. Um, also, I think long-term uh, reliability-wise, um, the diesel, my recommendation would be to, to develop an electric drive for this. Um, reserve the diesel for uh, uh, sites that have more um, on-site maintenance and support for, for that type of a uh, more involved uh, piece of equipment. So, uh, so this would probably be um, the way we would go, electric drive. And the total cost on that, the total estimated cost, again, without kind of pulling in some of the long-term maintenance costs, was $206,480. So that's sprinkler system and then the water supply development cost. There is a pond on site. Uh, that would have to be looked at in terms of, you know, can I maintain over a period of time it needs to supply the water. Uh, also, obviously, we're in the northeast. If it freezes, reliability issues, plus putting raw water into the system sediment. Um, Kind of regardless, I, I probably I probably wouldn't be my recommendation to try to use that pond. I think it would be a, a cleaner. I think an installation like this would be better with a probably an in-ground fiberglass, which is pretty common in the rural locations. So that's essentially close to 100 percent, 88 percent of the project cost to put the sprinkler system in. Primarily because there's no water supply. If there was a municipal water supply to tap into. You'd have the volume, most likely you'd have the pressure. You'd be offset from that standpoint. So that's the basis of the economic uh, financial burden. And then the alternative that we put together, um, in a case if you had a sprinkler system, there's no defend in place here. Uh, the idea is everyone gets out of the building. So that is the ultimate <clears throat> life safety is that everyone evacuates and, and leaves. Um, not a hospital or some scenario where multi-story building where we're going to have to control that fire while people are still in the building. Um, so that's kind of the kind of the core of it. So we put together um, enhancements to four areas of the code: um, occupant load, means of egress, interior finish, and fire alarm and detection. So uh, occupant load, um, the uh, petitioner agreed. My proposal was to drop it from 286 to 240. Uh, with the 240 persons, that's more than uh, I think as the descriptions were made. These aren't generally uh, these aren't concentrated use. So even at 15 square foot per person at 286, the petitioner doesn't need that uh, occupant load to, to um, uh, support these these events. So 240 would be would be sufficient. 240 brings that unconcentrated up to 20 square foot per person. So uh, even more unconcentrated than the, the code would uh, allow for concentrated. The reason why I chose the 240, um, again, this is a high risk requirement from the life safety code that the main exit uh, support two thirds of the occupant load. So that is a essentially a station nightclub derived requirement that you know individuals may not know where certain other exits are, uh, they're going to head for the main exit. So if you use the 240, if we drop it to 240, the main uh, entrance exit is good for two-thirds of the occupant load. So that's the primary reason uh, dropping it to 240. Also, it, it just gives you a less concentrated use. Um, from a means of egress standpoint, some of the things are added. Some of these are characteristics of the building because generally this is a small, small footprint building. It's not a large uh, facility. So um, for this occupant load, there would be two um, exits required. Uh, the building has four exits. One goes through the serving, the prep area. So we're not including that because we're not expecting uh, allowing um, uh, individuals that they would exit through there. So there's three exits from the main hall. Um, based on the less than 500, that would require only two. So there's an extra exit in the, call it the main, uh, where, the, where the, your typical um, participants would, would be located. So, that were, so based on that, you'd end up with a capacity of um, 48 inches would be required. Uh, we added the third exit, and you end up with two, essentially 2x uh, provided. So 90, 96 inches provided, 48 inches would be required. So 2x in terms of the capacity. Um, provided the three exits, um, again, there's a fourth, but no credit on that. Um, exit access travel distance is 200 
for a non-sprinkler building in the code, it's 200 feet for this, for this occupancy. Again, because of the three exits and the small plan view, uh, it's 45 feet. So you have short 45 foot travel distance um, to any of the exits. That would be the, the least amount uh, or the greatest uh, travel distance for anyone in the facility. Um, also, uh, this is uh, for the um, assembly main exit. Uh, 1029.2. Again, this is a, an over 300 occupant load requirement, although we're, we're meeting it, is that um, that the other exits provide 50%, um, and in this case, we're going to end up providing 100%. So on the, um, the other exits, we're providing 100 versus 50. So we have, again, these are over 300 person requirements, so these are meeting the more uh, large capacity uh, occupant loads. Uh, interior finish, uh, Class C would be permitted in this facility, and we're proposing uh, Class A and B on all the interior finish. Um, so from that uh, station nightclub scenario where they were sprinklers required because of the primarily the fast spread due to the interior finish, um, this would all be Class A and Class B. Um, and then fire, fire alarm and detection uh, for a group A, uh, less than 300, that's normally no manual fire alarm system required. Uh, in this case, a manual fire alarm system will be provided. So that would be horn strobes, uh, manual pulsations at all the, at all the exits. Um, also, this one comes essentially with the no sprinkler requirement, 907-213. That would be automatic smoke detection uh, throughout the facility um, if no sprinklers are installed. So this, this is essentially coming with the fact that um, if the building weren't to be sprinklered. And then 907.5, an occupant notification system, you have to provide if you've got the manual or the automatic detection, this case still in both. So you've got smoke detectors throughout, manual pool stations, and then an occupant notification system. So. You've got smoke if there happened to be nobody in the food prep area um, because maybe the caterers are gone, something would occur there, that would be an automatic uh, trip of the alarm system. So in areas where there are, are no one, um, there would be essentially detection. There would be, detect there would be detection throughout. However, um, everyone's going to be awake and uh, um, aware of their surroundings in the main area. So... Um, you're going to have uh, 200 sets of eyes in addition to smoke detection in the main area, but in all the surrounding areas, the bathrooms, food prep area, you'd also have the detection in case there was no one there at the time. Mm -hmm. So detection, which is early warning, um, manual pull stations for anyone who uh, you know, visually identify the fire pull, pull station on the way out. Um, just to, uh, by way of background, uh, and then just a, a, you know, somewhat in terms of, I, I, I use that same um, support from the life safety code um, in terms of supporting these um, alternatives that uh, the facility doesn't share a great deal, um, understanding the, the, the food consumption issue. But in terms of the nightclubs, um, restaurants, it doesn't share, um, they use discotheques. Um, it doesn't share some of those characteristics. It doesn't have festival seating. Uh, this is an open venue for dance clubs. 400 people here, concentrated seating. It doesn't have any of those characteristics. So that's one of them. Um, also, again, recognizing it's for existing facilities, but Chapter 11, uh, if this was an existing facility, would allow a less than 300 without sprinklers. So there is recognition in the New York State Uniform Code on the Fire Code Chapter 11 for this type of facility. Again, if it was existing, this is new construction, but in terms of a acceptable level of safety that's in the Uniform Code, it, it, it is recognized that a facility like this, it would be 300, you'd have to sprinkle this under the existing Chapter 11, 300 or more with alcohol consumption. Um, you'd have to have a I guess that'd be a retrofit, essentially a mandatory retrofit. So there is some recognition in the code for the level of safety that's here. So 
those combination of those factors, um, relatively quick detection. Um, you've got individuals in the facility. You've also got the smoke detection in areas where individuals might not, not be at a particular point in time. Um, uh, and also the, the manual fire alarm system and then the occupant notification system. Um, there are some, I didn't put this in here, but we could, if you wanted to add it, um, there are some I have under uh, uh, evaluated. Um, we, we could shut trip speakers and, and things of that nature. So we could shut, if, if it was dancing at the time, we could shut trip um, the power to speakers and the place would essentially go quiet in terms of uh, any additional uh, speaker requirements. So that's actually being used, uh, I think it was Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, uh, um, because they went so stringent on the sprinklers after station night club. Part of it was uh, they had to back off, back off a little bit and part of it was if you could just shut everything down so people could hear. So I didn't include that, but if you wanted to add that, we could shut trip. Um, we could turn the lights on and we could shut trip uh, off uh, the power to any amplifier or speakers. So uh, normal lighting would come on if it was dimmed and we could shut and there would be no loudspeakers. Um, we could add that to that. So, um, so essentially this would Small, relatively plan, uh, in plan view, 45 foot max travel distance, essentially 2x required. We have a third exit, which is 50% you know, greater, but when you look at the capacity, we've got twice the capacity. Uh, if you lose an exit, we still have 100%. So in terms of getting people out of the facility, notifying the, the individuals in the facility, um, We've got everyone who's got eyes on it and the detection and the alarm system. And like I said, the big chunk trip and we can turn the lights on too. Um, and we can get the, get the individuals out of the facility relatively quickly. Um, again, there's no intention. You're not protecting anyone in place. So everyone essentially to, to leave the building. Um, we dropped the occupant load, provided that um, two thirds capacity out the main exit. And um, uh, not, not a tremendous difference, but uh, pulling everything would be class A and class B on the interior, not even class C. Understood. So we pull class A. So you don't have the you don't have that interior finish component to add it into a potential fire in the facility. Okay. No commercial kitchen, so that commercial kitchen can be um, uh, a source of of, um, of of a fire. So there's no commercial equip commercial cooking equipment in the facility either. Okay. Um, any questions regarding to that from the board? Open up the discussion about the sprinklers. <clears throat> I've got one. Jared from the board, uh, you're talking about square footage per person. Does that take into account your seating for eight to ten person tables, your seating for the chairs that are going to be in that area? Does it take into account any of that? Well, that would be essentially the... That would be the maximum at a particular. Uh, right, but that will take away your square foot per person as well. Uh, tr right. Yes. No. That was a growth. That was. That was those so were, you're you're based on that empty room, based on square foot per person. That's correct. Right. Yes. This is Laura from the board. Um, I have two questions. Um, Firstly, um, just curious, I saw on the website that the interior finishes are in our wood now, which obviously enhances the rustic look that you're going for. Did you have any ideas about what those um, Class A and B finishes might be? Well, most woods are good for um, at least like a Class C. Mm -hmm. Some of them are good for like a Class B. Um, and then if um, we would either go, we'd either tap tested. Um, for flame spread, or um, we would we would coat them essentially with the materials that are on the market to give you essentially a class A finish. Okay. We'd have to paint. We'd have to paint right. them, tint them. You know, right. whatever so color would satisfy the facility, and then we'd have to we'd have to paint the uh, the wood um, to get. Uh, if you if you do it, you're going to get a class A. Right. Um, but some of them either we test it. Or if we know the species, like in the trusses and things like that, those were good for class B. Okay. 
And to sec that that has to meet by fire official and code official, correct? For the municipality, I believe. So for if there's any coding. Yes, I would think if, okay. if you're gonna code it, right, you it definitely to wanna clear that with the code the local code official as far as if um, that's acceptable uh, on their right. part. Not right. every code official accepts painted on finish. You know, think in places where they could wear off. Um, so you just wanna clear that with the local code. Yeah. I mean, the, the other alternative is to replace them with a species that gives you a class B. Sure. There are plenty of species that yes. will give class B. Okay. Uh, my second question, this is Laura again from the board. Um, can you just, somebody show me, this is the plan we got. Can you just show me where the additional bathrooms are? So we're, we're showing one ADA, one women's, one men's. Yep. Well, there's two stalls in here, and there's, this is the ADA. There's actually two stalls in here, and there's two stalls in here. So it's not that there's additional, but instead of showing a one hole here, there's okay. two. Like, is that a urinal? That's a sink. Yeah, let me put my glasses right. on. That's a lab. It doesn't look big enough for, for two two toilet stalls and a sink. Maybe it's drawn wrong, but... Um, it might not be the scale, but there's one here. Actually, this toilet is here. There's one here, and then there's a sink here. This one is correct. So I actually, you walk in the door... There's a sink here, and there's a little door here. There's a, one stall here, and then the other stall is here for the girls. So this one will go here. This would slide back a little bit. And there's a door on each of these to, for privacy. Mm -hmm. So those work good. Then this one, the men's is correct, only there's an additional urinal there. Right. So are the toilets here backing up on this wall? This is the. This um, is they're, no, they're, they're just it's like sideways. this. This okay. one is made to that, and then this yeah. one is actually goes like that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That one is correct. That's, a, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, I don't know why that wasn't. And um, you had said something prior about this being like a trailer that you dropped in place. Is that no longer the case? These are now site built, or this was a trailer? So. Well, it was a, I built it on site and then we put it on piers mm -hmm. and attached it to the building. Okay, but the floor level is level with the oh, floor. Absolutely. Okay, yes. just so that I make sure that the ADA yes. um, yep. toilet works out. Okay. This is Andy L. on the board. Um, I see on the site plan that you have a pump house shed. Yes. Um, on the other side of the pond. Yes. So what kind of pump is that and what is it used yeah, for? That's for irrigating our blueberries. So what's in there is, a, is somewhat of an antique, a two-cylinder Lister diesel, okay. and that pumps, it's a high volume, low pressure pump. We pump water out of the pond into the irrigation system. That's what waters our blueberries. How deep is that pond? The pond is six feet deep. And it kind of tapers in gently to a six foot at the deepest point and this is Andy again from the board um, my second question is you state that the project value is at 235 but this is that current construction cost or is that the actual overall cost of the entire building that's where we are now yeah that's what I've spent so $45 a square foot is your overall construction cost for that this building? Yeah, it's, uh, not doing the math right now, but that's, that's the total cost that you've got paid out for where we're at right now with the building, which is pretty much at finishes other than what these enhancers may have to have. Okay. Can I have one other? Yeah, sure. again, if I yeah, yeah, just I know that was a question about, I think it was towards like an exit discharge issue, maybe. Um, but one thing, you know, I identified when I first started working with um, Mr. Fetter and Mr. Dorsey um, was that, you know, we'd have to establish a, uh, what would be the public way, and then they'd have to have that uh, out the, the three doors to ensure that, the, you know, individuals can, um, can exit, and that would be something that would be maintained and operate. Um, characteristics for an exit discharge. So, public public way. We're not going to the street. It's quite a bit off the street, but um, out into the parking area. So, it would likely be uh, concrete sidewalks. 
or something you know similar that didn't have a trip hazard. This is Dave from the board. What, when was the building constructed? What date? Let's see. We started in early July. July first. July first. Yeah. Of last 22. year. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. These plans are dated March twenty twenty two, and stamped, but they weren't submitted for permit. Is that? That's correct. I understand. We kind of we we. Did the plans, we got our material list, we got stamp plans, thinking that I kind of did this thing in reverse naturally, as you all know. So um, by having your stamp plans drawn and, and ready, we thought this would be, you know, enough to show our our people in the town that, you know, it's not junk, it's a real building. It's but unfortunately it didn't follow the correct procedures, so now we're dealing with a So if that went through the review process, you would have been laid out with your options for a sprinkler system or what would have needed to be done to meet that code. Yeah, well, right. if, if it was done in the beginning, I would have been aware of the sprinkler right. thing, and then it would have been like, okay, what are we going to do? Are we going to move so the, forward? So the hardship, the hardship would have been seen at the forefront before building? I would, I guess so. Before investing what you've invested. Any other questions? So, so this is Laura from the board. Um, so just to be clear, the three exits that are shown on the plans currently the other than the main entrance, the two side entrances and then the rear go out to um, a non-paved surface, but you're planning to pave that, is that what my understanding is? Mm -hmm. So at, at, at the time of a permit, that should be either done or a conditional for a certificate of occupancy. We have an estimate already. Okay. And, and actually the base. main exit is paved, is, is, is right. a concrete. Right, yeah. right, it's the others that I'm concerned about. Yes, the other two, yeah. Can I add another piece? A piece in it? Sure. That would be. Um, I didn't put those types of elements, even though I knew those were deficiencies relative to where the facility was today. Um, but those would be, you know, if the building went through the, the plan review and, and they, uh, Mr. Fetter is aware of the requirement, like for an exit discharge and establishing a, like what would be the public way, that type of thing. So there are items like that. Exit discharge would have to be. Um, even though this building is constructed, there are still additional elements like right. that that have to be added. Yeah, I don't know if um, Mr. Nolan considers these plans finished or not, but we can all see a few deficiencies still. Um, like for one, for example, is that you do need to have a strobe in each bathroom, you know, because, you know, for anybody who cannot hear the alarm, the strobe in a bathroom is what alerts them to an emergency. Um, also, I see that you have emergency lights on the inside of the building, but you need to have emergency lights at the at each exit as well on the exterior because if it's a dark night and once you step out, if the power gets cut for you know when the fire department arrives, you got a bunch of people standing around in the dark, so you need something with battery backup so that people can exit safely, and that should really be a lit path to a place of safety um, away from the building. And maybe Mr. Merringer, who's a fire uh, fireman. Could speak to where that place might be, you know, based on the site plan. I don't know how far, right. so how far away from the building would you want them to be. Right. And, and that's going to be part of your area of refuge away from the building. But you have to have, you have to continue your exit of discharge to that, to that place. And I mean, these are things that probably your local code official will will tell you. But um, just again, you know, when we look at the whole picture, when we look at um, the items you're asking for. Um, so we just want to make sure that everything's to code and everything's safe. Mm -hmm. This is Andy Ellis from the board. Have you uh, entertained other um, quotes for this fire? 
uh, system? The no, that, that was because uh, we went with the, uh, the tank and electric pump. And term, in terms of the... Uh, well, tank. I have a couple concerns. Um, one is I'm looking at a similar case that I was a part of in Rochester. Um, it's a 4885 square foot building. The stated cost of the construction, very similar uh, mm -hmm. to your building, was $800,000. And they have a quote here for a system. It's, it is electric, 55 PSI, 15 horsepower. The tanks, the sprinkler system in the building, um, and they had a backup generator already, and their cost was 103. So it seems, for me, it seems like both of these numbers are a little bit out of line. 103 for the the whole system for the fire for the yeah. sprinkler on the tank. Sprinkler, the tank, the pump, the sprinkler system in the building. Because we, I mean, I obtained budget quotes on the, I mean, again, yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah. You know, yeah. are there other options here besides this electric? Because you would have to have, if the power goes out, you have no power to the system. Um, I'm pretty sure this facility would not require, this isn't a facility to require a, a backup generator backup. for this. And if it did, we would have to go the diesel, we have to go, we'd go the diesel route. I'm just trying to compare yeah, no, the numbers. I, I, I agree. I mean, we did get um, we got multiple. Not, in fact, one of the one of the underground tank quotes was close to hundred thousand dollars, and we didn't include that. I included mm -hmm. the, the forty seven k um, fiberglass underground tank. Um, got a few different uh, budget quotes on the fire pump equipment. You can see the one mm -hmm. from uh, the local vendor uh, for about well, again, it was similar, about fifty thousand for mm -hmm. the equipment. Again, they were budget quotes. So I, I assume you take all this, put this together, you're going to get some, um, you're going to get some, you know, competitiveness, and you try to you know, have some cost reduction. I can't argue with the hundred thousand. No, it seems, just, it seems awfully low given. The I'm just going on based yeah, on. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I agree. Uh, documentation that was given yep. to, yep. to me during this case. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not a fire sprinkler yep. expert, um, so. I'm just trying to yeah, no, look no. at the hardship. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. I didn't state that in here. I mean, I, yeah. I, I would expect you to get some reduction uh, in the cost once you get this out, but it would still be a, a large percentage of the two thirty to two thirty five. Um, and also, you know, I'm not sure if you include in the economic, if you include like a present value of the maintenance costs. Um, you know that is going to be you know the fire pumps are uh, you know they are going to they are going to require they're going to require annual flow testing if it's a diesel drive it's going to require a representative to come in and work on the engine and um, you know like I said my particular my my recommendation would be to go if we could use electric drive go electric drive because um, a lot less sensitive to lack of maintenance or mm -hmm. delayed maintenance on, on those lines. If you put power to it, it's probably, start, it's probably gonna pump water. Whereas the diesel's got a lot more a lot more going on, especially today, there's more electronics. And um, not to say that Mr. Fetter couldn't maintain it or get someone to maintain it, but I think electric drive would be, would be better in this particular case. But if, if we had to work this out, then we'd have to look at that in detail, you know, in terms of what would be the better option. Also, which might play into this, I'm not sure, but you know, their pump equipment, this is a small building and um, the design density is not gonna be that great. You, you don't have any scale here to, um, the pumps are only so small, uh, especially the diesel drive, you, you essentially have to oversize a diesel drive because they don't make diesel drives on a 30, 40 horsepower. So you end up, <clears throat> you end up buying a, a larger engine than you really need. Not not the case with the electric motor, but so there isn't any uh, any scale here to deal with. You're putting in equipment that, to some degree, is slightly oversized because you're at the bottom end of the um, UL and FM ratings. Essentially, you're down to like 250, 300 ppm, maybe 400 ppm. <clears throat> 
Great. Great. <clears throat> Any other questions from the board at this time? I'd like to open it up to anyone online, um, anyone from the Department of State that would like to offer any thoughts or comments regarding this case. This is uh, Chris Jensen, Department of State. I'm looking at uh, some of the pictures from the interior of the building, and they don't seem to coincide with the plans that were provided. I can see the, the top cord of the trusses on the photos. But in the plans, it shows like R38 insulation on either side of the truss filling the gap. And a lot of the items looking at the photos don't match the plans and don't seem to meet any part of the energy code, the commercial energy code. I don't see any mechanical ventilation. I don't see any emergency lighting. I don't see any exit lighting. I don't see regular lighting. Uh, it seems to be like this and bulbs on strings and stuff. So there's just just wanted to bring the fact that it just seems that even if this gets passed, there's a lot of items that need to be addressed on the plans that aren't <coughs> being shown or were not installed per plan. I can comment on that. Sure. Ira Dorsey, Dorsey Construction. The uh, ceilings haven't been finished yet. They have um, the detail that's on there for the option of the R49 fiberglass and some intermediate framing and then drywall or uh, the spray foam option with the thermal barrier sprayed on it. The ceilings have not been completed yet. So what you're seeing, the exposed uh, top cords of the trusses and the underside of the roof deck actually, actually is uh, because that ceiling hasn't been finished yet. So yeah, what we're looking at, Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, there's other items such as like the under slab by uh, insulation. Are there photos of that? The code enforcement officer is going to have to do some destructive uh, inspections if there isn't some sort of evidence that that's installed per plan. Because if you say the roof wasn't installed per plan, how do we know what was else was not installed per plan? Uh, there's just a lot of issues. There's no vestibule as far as energy code. There, if there isn't, then the blower door test needs to be completed. There's no mechanical plans. There's no electrical plans. I just, I'm just making the statement that these plans are very lacking in detail. Well, this is Chuck Fetter. Um, in regards to the under the insulation for the heating and under the slab, I have pictures uh, that support what's been put underneath there. I don't exactly remember the details, but I have detailed pictures of that, if that can help. I think the, um, it's gonna be understood whatever comes out of the, the meeting today, this still, the building overall needs to meet building code requirements for new construction. Yes. So that'll, it'll continue through that process as you go along, you're gonna to have to work with the building code enforcement official to demonstrate any questions or concerns they have, as well as plans that represent the as-built construction, mm -hmm. and then where to take it from there and continue. That'll be a requirement. Well, no matter what happens when we leave this room. Yeah, well, that's what we're working on and, um, and hopes to. Right now we have a stop work order in place. So yeah. by we, we were trying to get a permit to fill out the paperwork, and the inspector told me that, no, once you get your variance or whatever happens, then we can give you a building permit and you can continue doing XYZ and that allows us to get to the final step of the CO. So what you're looking at in essence is an unfinished building that we can't work on till we get our building permit. Yeah. So we're trying to get to that point so we can continue and then be in compliance. Okay. As long as we're all understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Any other thoughts or comments, Mr. Jensen? Nope, all good, thank you. I also offer, open it up to if there's a building code enforcement official present online. Um, there's not. There's not one present today, okay. Anybody else that's, um, that's joined via WebEx that would like to offer a comment on this case?
Okay. Any other questions from the board at this time? No. Okay. No. So then at this time, we're going to go into deliberations, which means we're going to ask everyone but board members to leave the room. Um, and the board members will deliberate the case. And then we'll invite you formally back into the room. We'll go back on the record. So let's go off the record. <coughs> On the record. Thank you. We're going to come out of the recess and add a petition number 2023-0192. The petitioner is Star Farm Blue Blueberries. So the board has gone on deliberation. We've discussed this case in great detail. And we're going to have another discussion with petitioners to kind of describe the stance that the board believes that we're at with this case. Um, and what may come out of that is you may choose to ask the board to adjourn because we're just going to talk through where our head's at. And right now, as the case stands, we cannot approve the case with the existing information that we've been provided. There are other options that we see in here, and one is, well, First off, is that these plans have proven to be um, really not reflective of as built construction currently. They also, there's a lot of issues as far as the energy code and other items within those plans that we're identifying. That so um, we'd ask that, you know, current plans and as built construction be presented to the board. But furthermore, um, we have laid out other options you may choose or be able to get to. And I'd like to open up the board to have those discussions with the petitioners so we can describe kind of where we're at with other thoughts um, as far as those other options might might be for you. So anybody? Yeah, on the board? this is Andy from the board. Um, I would like to see uh, uh, an updated estimated budget for the entire build. Uh, so that we can compare this uh, as a hardship item to the actual sprinkler system, because that's really what we're we're voting on is the hardship. Mm -hmm. This is what's being presented to us. So I I would like to see uh, a more accurate number of a projected overall cost, and also we discussed. Um, are there other options out there for a different type of sprinkler system? Yeah, so describe if you ask the board to vote on this on this case today, unfortunately, it would not be approved. So we're going to kind of present that. And one is the occupancy load you're asking to be over the 100, which is what's triggering that fire sprinkler system requirement. So one option would be to have action load less than 100, as well as reduce your square footage of your building down below 5,000. <clears throat> or put in fire separations of that building to meet the 5,000 requirement. Um, but the most, the sticking point is being over that 100, 100 person occupancy load within that building. <clears throat> the other thing is there's other ways through that code because currently is an enclosed building and that was a choice that was made to enclose this building for the venue. But there's other ways through this where you may not want to enclose that building so that you know, it doesn't, that's not triggering the, the sprinkler system. So any other thoughts on the board member to give them that? I know we had some discussions on other things there. Thank you, and on it. this yeah. is Jackie. So you've got the 100 occupant limit could be a choice or the um, enough percentage of open walls to be considered a pavilion and not need the sprinkler as a seasonal use, which would still, be able to accommodate later season weddings with um, portable heating equipment. And then there's an alternative fire suppression to a water-based system if they wanted to exceed the 100 occupants. If they were going to stay with the 100 occupants, then we'd be looking at that over 5,000 square foot variance also, which is where the option to fire separate the non 
main hall portion of the building from the other portion of the building would be applicable. Can I say something? Please. We, um, Please identify um, yourself just so the correct. Yes, right. hi, my name is Joanne Velasky Fetter. Uh, one side of the building has four French doors as well as an exit door. Um, in response to your recommendation, by those doors being open, does that have any significance? No, I, based on what I've seen in technical bulletins, it, it's open wall space, it's not doors. Okay. And those doors also, according to these plans, which may or may not be right, swing in, which is contrary to egress code for this type of mm -hmm. occupancy. Okay. And if you can, can't tell, some of the same point is that we have plans in front of us, but they're proven to be not accurate. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know what's actually been built. We also don't know as a result of the other code requirements that you're going to have to go through to make sure you're meeting all the other requirements. For example, a vestibule might be, have to be added. That's also going to increase your square footage of your building. So there's other items in here that need to be addressed that ultimately affect what's being requested today. Well, we don't want to dictate that you have to go out and spend money on plans if you would be satisfied with just capping your occupancy limit at a hundred. You'd still have to do better plans for your code review by the local code official. But for our purposes, we don't want to lead you on to go spend money on something to come back here and it might still get denied and it's not what you want. So we're trying to leave the option to you of which route you want to go next. Well, what are, you're talking about a firewall from separating one building from another. What do you, explain to me what that, what you're thinking there. So I had an occupancy in my jurisdiction where they had an existing building and they added on to it and they fire rated between the addition and the existing building to separate it so that it was considered two separate buildings. They were together, but they were two separate buildings. So any openings between the two buildings were fire rated opening, self-closing mechanisms, the rating on the vertical assembly was per the code for separated occupancies. So you have that 400 square foot prep area that's minimally attached to the main building. You could find a UL design for uh, the vertical separations and then the doors between them that might meet a separated occupancy. What, what it does is it allows you to consider those two areas that are separated by that partition to be considered separate, mm -hmm. distinct areas. So then it, that ultimately affects the, the area that's being mm -hmm. counted towards the occupancy load and those occupancy. The because your main hall is under 5,000, right? And that's the number that you're trying to meet right now. Mm -hmm. I think with some unique, or not unique, but just some planning that could have probably done prior, but here we are today. Yeah. With the right way of looking at the code, you probably can get there. And that's a lot of our sticking point, too, is that, you know, we're sitting today looking at plans that, you know, who knows where it's constructed, but with some prior planning done, knowing that these are the code requirements for this type of facility, mm -hmm. you could have got there in another way. Mm -hmm. Can we still? I think you can. I think you, I think you go to a board, get someone who knows the code well, an architect that can say, here's your options, here's the layout. Hey, look, if you, if you open up these walls, and maybe you're a seasonal venue, but if you, you chose to enclose the walls to be, to be a four-season venue with a higher accuracy load, that's what's triggering the requirements here. So I think there's kind of, you're trying to grasp that as much as you can, by, but without knowing the code implications. And so I think having someone knowledgeable of that could get you there in, in other ways, which is why we don't want to sit here and say, you're denied so that you guys, if, if we deny you today to come back for that same variance, you couldn't do that. We've already done, we've already denied it. Where this gives you the opportunity to say, we choose as the petitioners to, to adjourn it. We're going to revisit what we have here, gather the information a little bit better, give us as built, and then we, we could revisit it. I do want to say, though, July is, we, we meet every other month, this board, and we only take a certain amount of cases during those boards, and we're understanding that July is already pretty full. Okay. So knowing that, I just, I have to say that 
it does push to the next available time slot. Okay. Approximately, when would that be? There every other month. There's September, one in September, September, likely. And then November. But it's also going to depend on how quickly you can get someone to redesign right yeah. before you. Yeah. Well, then I'm sure we can. You can get right on that, right, Ira? Sure. <laughs> we can move that part along. It's the, um, so what we have, really, we can't do anything. If you ask us today to make a decision, unfortunately, today yeah, would not be, well, would not be in your favor. Permit. Yeah, so because we can't get a, a, a building permit to do any work that's required. So we're really starting all over again. And it's yeah. hard. Or you can sprinkle or, or, or investigate. Right. Right. Yes. Or, or there's an alternative to a sprinkler or something along those lines, an extinguishment system yeah. along those lines, too. So. I don't know. I'm just curious, just saying, I'm just just asking the question if you know of something because I don't I'm not aware I've Jack, no, what flow. is the name of that system uh, FM 200 it's the new version of halo it's a chemical based system it, there's yes. chemical based systems so they use them in like computer rooms but so we'd have to have you know what I mean so there's other options out there that we could. Oh. so it might be worth talking to some other sprinkler providers um, about alternate systems would you be willing to give us your uh, the information you have on the sprinkler system person? Yeah, that was a hell of a price there. That's a <laughs> incredible <laughs> price. Are they out of Syracuse? You're welcome to look at that. Look Let me take a picture of that. And yes, Mark, can we have that? You may. No, we that's can, my fact. Okay. That's my, that's my official fact. Where were they based out of, Andy? Yeah, we'll take uh, a picture. Probably Syracuse. Yeah. Where are they all? MNS Fire Protection, LLC. Syracuse. East Syracuse. Let's see if this will work. My phone and me don't get along so well. <laughs> Was it Google? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you're with your phone. You got a phone? I dropped this one too many times and now it's got a mind of its own. So. Great. Any other questions while you're thinking about that for the board? think so. I, so we're, we're pretty much starting over. So at least, uh, you know, we, we kind of know where we sit. We know what we have to do. But well, if we could get a sprinkler system for that amount of money, that would really... I, I would like, encourage you, know, you to be in, look at those You know, be an achievable goal. Right. Where the other ones were just so far out there. I'm like, you know, it's... Well, 1K is a hardship too, but <laughs> the whole thing yeah, has well, been... The whole thing has been... Third in a bit of a problem. So you'd have to go through a German. Yes, we would have to do an official German if that's what you want. Yes. It sounds like we're going to do it in a German. Yes, I believe it'll yes. be in a German, yes. Right? I'm sure. Yeah. Yes, okay. we don't want to go ahead. Yeah, because it took an official yeah. vote on the German. I think yeah. we do. I think we have to conclude. Yes. Yes, it's a German. Yeah. 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 To an unspecified date. Excuse <laughs> me. Things on the front. So we'd want to make sure when you come back that your plans are really pretty much ready to be approved with all the energy code information correct yeah. and any you know if there's a vestibule added or correct the bathrooms or you know, if there's additional mm -hmm. lighting or emergency lighting mm -hmm. all that should be on the plan sure. and the only outstanding issue should just be what we're going to you know review for the um and pretty much our our code enforcement officer will show us like, this is what's required. Like, if we were to give him something, he'll say, you need X, Y, Z. Your architect should be doing that. Yes. Right? Okay. That is. And then they would review them. Okay. You need to find an architect who knows the code that okay. can, to, can direct you in that way. Okay. Or an engineer. Oh, you know, yeah. You know, any design professional. Oh, okay. You know, the building code is statewide. The local guy doesn't have to tell any architect or engineer what they have to do. Okay. It's their job to know what they have to do. And okay. they should be presenting the drawings to your local official. Complete. Okay. These are not complete. Getting quite an education. <laughs> and if you go back to Nolan Engineering, Jason would probably just call that code enforcement official and they could talk through it together and make sure they're in agreement with what you're proposing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But in the end, your design professional is the one who takes liability for it, not okay. the local code official. Right. So, so that was a completely open building when it came to us. Hmm. Very similar 
openness, trust, open trusses, uh -huh. and same type of thing, fireproofing issues, okay. and sprinkler system. I, I would just like to see a little bit more accurate numbers, um, and maybe some alternatives for the fire. Yeah. Well, didn't we have some prices for the diesel pump, and that was more? Yeah. The diesel pump is higher, right, Rich? I, we <clears throat> I only got the quote for electric drive, but diesel would be higher. The motors, the, the engines, we know that I'm more than the fuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. The original estimate, I believe, was 90000 just for the pump. Right. The diesel pump it was a standalone unit. And then once we started adding the other numbers, we're like, well, that's way out there. Let's see what the electric brings us, and that's where Rich got his mm -hmm. numbers from. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or any, anything else from people on the WebEx meeting today from the Department of State or anyone else? Great. Nothing from the Department of State at this point. Thank you. Okay, so bear with us. We're going to go through a little bit of formality sure. to conclude the case, and then um, we'll be on our way. So, <clears throat> great. So, upon the application before it uh, regarding the um, the building. Located at 2478 Galway Road, Town of Galway, County of Saratoga, State of New York. The petitioners are uh, requesting, uh, initially requested an appeal, but now requesting a relief from the requirements at 19 NYCRR Part 1225, Section 903.2.1.2. The board makes the following findings. Number one, the petitioner indicates a 12,000 square foot portion of the building was constructed in 2015 without a building permit. Number two, the petitioner indicates the remaining 4,022 square foot portion of the building was constructed in 2022 without a building permit. Number three, the publicly available documentation, photos, uh, and website postings detail the structure has been historically utilized uh, for large gatherings and social events where food and drink are consumed. Number four, publicly available documentation, the photos and websites posting detail the structure has been occupied prior to obtaining any required building permits or associated certificates of occupancy. Number five, the petitioner indicates uh, that the existing building has an occupant load of 286 persons and the fire area is 5,222 square feet. The existing building is constructed currently uh, is constructed without an, automatic, without an automatic sprinkler system as required by the 2020 Fire Code in New York State, Section 903.2.1.2. Number six, that the currently available construction plans provided to the Town of Galway and the Division of Building Codes and Standards are lacking detail regarding on-site wastewater management systems, mechanical systems, plumbing systems, fire protection, and energy code compliance. The local code enforcement officer has indicated that um, <clears throat> prior to an issuance of a building permit, the applicant will be required to provide plans and supplemental information necessary, necessary to ensure code compliance. Number seven, according to the 2020 Building Code in New York State, uh, Section 303.2, an accuracy group A2 pertains to a building where its intended use is for food and drink consumption including banquet halls. Number eight is the board has denied the requested appeal uh, of the building code enforcement official and agrees that the building is an occupancy group A2. And then number nine, after discussions with the applicant, uh, the applicant has requested the board to adjourn the case. <clears throat> Wherefore, is determined, that concludes the findings. It is determined that the application for the variance with regards to 19 NYCRR Part 1225, Section 903.2.1.2 shall be adjourned. Do I have a motion? I will make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Jackie. Great. I'll now pull the board. 
regarding those in favor say yay, those opposed say yay. <clears throat> Ms. Coons? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yay. Ms. Ryder? Yay. Mr. Berenger? Yay. And the chairman also votes yay. That's four yays, zero nays. Um, furthermore, the decision is limited to the specific building and the applicant before it as it contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval or any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. Great, that now concludes this case. Thank you very much for being here today. We could go off the record. The record. We're on the record. Hi folks, how are you? He was at our last meeting too. Yes, he was. He's going to be representing a lot of cases. I, I am. mentioned that last time, Mr. Morelli. Yes. Yeah, we'd be seeing you a lot. Yes, and I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there to represent at least three more in September. So I look forward to meeting okay. you. Okay. Fantastic. I actually would have been there today, except I had some car issues on the way home late from work last night. So I'm stuck home today with no vehicle. But uh, this is just as good. Yep, we can see you. No problem. You can hear us okay? Yes, I'm going to slide to the side so I can put my uh, drawing on screen and I can navigate through the drawing. I'm not sure if you received it or not. We actually just got access to the apartments very recently, um, and we just completed a drawing earlier in the week. Uh, but I can navigate easily through the drawing and explain what's going on, and then we can get your hard copies of it at, at some point, whether it today be an email. That would be fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> we do not have copies of drawings. Right. Yeah, I knew that. We just did finishing them up earlier in the week, and that's only because with 16 units, we had trouble accessing each and every apartment, but we're good now. Okay. All right, well, I'll um, just hold on. Your, let me just introduce the case quickly and then. Um... All right, nice. <laughs> yeah, we can see you. Everybody had plans. See that? Okay. All right, I'll go through a little quick introduction and then we'll open it up to you, Mr. Morelli, to uh, show us what you have. So, <clears throat> all right, so this petition. Uh, is the second petition for the day. It's petition number 2023-0012. Uh, the petitioner is a representative, Mr. Morelli, for, and it's representing Z. Ipec and Sons, Inc., is who we have recorded um, here. And it pertains to a building of Group R2 occupancy, three stories in height, Type 3B, ordinary unprotected construction, located at 1011 Union Street, City of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. And relief is being requested from Chapter 1 or 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, regarding the cellar ceiling. Petitioners requesting relief from the requirement that a fire retardant ceiling or sprinkler system be provided in the cellar or dwelling. Okay, Mr. Morelli, I'll open it up the floor to you present uh, what you have for the board. Thank you. Okay. Again, thank please you. state your name. Oh, my name is Dan your name. I'm sorry. My name is Dan Morelli with SRG Architects, and I'm representing Mr. Hadi Ipek in his re request for relief from New York State Multi-Residence Law Section 30, which requires cellar ceilings to be fire rated or equipped with a sprinkler system. For the building on the board behind me, uh, Mr. IPAC recently purchased. He owns a three story, 16 unit structure located at 1011 Street in the city of Schenectady, New York, which is classified as an R2 occupancy with a type three construction and a total gross floor area of approximately 10,800 square feet. In essence, including the basement, uh, we've got four floors at 2,700 square feet, which totals the 10,800. Uh, the building was constructed circa 1920, which differs from our application. I don't know how we keep doing this, but somehow the application says 1984. Um, and if that were the case, we wouldn't be in front of you guys today. So, uh, <laughs> right. what, what year was it? 1920. What's it? Go ahead. We missed that again. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. So, the building was constructed circa 1920. <laughs> 1920. Got it. Okay. We have 1945. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was. Uh, if I could jump in, this is Dan Farrell with the Department of State. Um, I noticed the uh, the building year didn't seem incorrect on the application. So I reached out to the city of Schenectady, and they talked to somebody in their. Um, I'm trying to think of who it was. Um, it's it's not coming to mind at the moment, but they said 1945 was what they had on their records. 
Yeah. Um, it was in for the assessor's office in the city of Schenectady. Okay, duly noted. So maybe they were wrong. I'm not really sure, but um, that's what that's the information I was given. Okay, my my information came from the current property owner, and uh, when he told me, he said, "I think it was about 1920." So okay. with the 1945. <laughs> Either way. Yeah, different time. Uh, no problem. Thank you. And I promise you, in the next set of uh, of uh, applications, we will get this right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, so let's go through floor by floor. We'll show you what we've got. We'll show you what's in place. We'll show you what we plan on doing. Uh, the building's in pretty good shape, actually. Uh, it's uh, the basement floor is approximately twenty seven hundred square feet. It does have unfinished ce ceilings. Uh, with a series of separation walls at the two stairwell locations. And right now, the basement is currently equipped with hardwired and interconnected combo units, smoke detector, carbon monoxide detectors, and uh, fire rated self closing doors. And that's at each location. So there's a closing door with a, with a CO, closing door with a CO, closing door with a CO, closing door with a CO. Those are all currently in place and will remain in place. And we felt that there was no need to add any additional devices in the basement ceiling. The first, second, and third floors are fairly similar, uh, with the exception of uh, the first and third floors have five rental units, and the second floor has six rental units. There's two two bedrooms on each floor in the front of the building with a separation stair and a hallway, and then there's single units single bedroom units in the center of the building. Uh, the difference being floor one and three have one studio apartment and floor two has two studio apartments, which constitute the six units <laughs> to the five. Uh, all common areas on each floor are currently equipped with hardwired and interconnected combo smoke and carbon monoxide detectors and self-closing doors entering the building and entering each apartment unit. And as I stated earlier, at each access from the stair to the basement. Inside the units, however, um, each unit is currently equipped with a wireless 10 year lithium, uh, not interconnected smoke detection system uh, with each bedroom having a smoke detector and within 15 feet of each bedroom in each unit, a combo smoke carbon monoxide detector. Uh, the property owner is currently in the process of switching all of those out and hardwiring those um, with, with wire mold. Uh, he's begun the process, but he hasn't completed it yet. But at some point in the very near future, within the next month or so, uh, every device in the building will be hardwired and in interconnected. So we're not going to add any devices. We're just going to switch out the battery operated uh, and hardwire them and the hardwired devices in the common areas now will remain just the way they are. There's a fire alarm system throughout the building uh, with a control panel on the first floor exit door area, and that's directly connected to the fire department. And the building is also equipped with emergency lighting and exit signs. Uh, at this point, the applicant seeking relief from New York State Multi-Residence Law Section 30 based on the following findings. Uh, we feel that installing a fire rated ceiling in the unfinished pre existing basement, or installing a sprinkler system would create an ex excessive and unreasonable economic burden on the property owner and the tenants simply due to the high cost of performing the tasks, as well as the MEP obstructions. As you know, these old buildings got a ton of those in the basement ceilings, and uh, we just feel that it would be physically impractical to uh, do any of those tasks. The alternate measure to achieve the intended objective. This is the presence of hardwired and interconnected code compliance smoke detectors. Uh, and at smoke detectors, combo carbon monoxide detectors at designated locations, or in essence, the same locations they're at now, um, which will be, uh, which are current now, or will be present uh, upon the next inspection. Are there any questions for me? Yes, this is Laura on the board. So just Hi, to Lauren. be clear. Hi, Dan. Um, when, uh, if a device was set off in the basement, where would 
uh, where would it be enunciate for the for people to hear it? Where are those um, devices located? It would enunciate in the basement, in all the common corridors, and at every stair landing. Okay, so the interconnection of the apartments is just within the apartment as code requires, right? So there's no inter. So if a if an alarm goes off in one apartment, all the apartments don't go off. It's just no, within the apartment. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So it's the and common that's, areas that's, that the basement would notify. Okay. Correct. And that's current now, but that's going to be switched out so that they are all interconnected uh, within the next Okay. Year. Well, I guess that's that was my actual question. Like, what will the end result be? So you're so now you're going to combine. You're going to connect all all units. That's as correct. Well, so, and so. If something is set off in the basement, it would not only alert the common hallways and stairwells, but also the devices in each apartment. Correct. Okay. This, this is Jared from the board. Did, Hi, Jared. Did, hello. Did that, uh, and you said that is monitored, that is a monitored system, so that has automatic detection to the fire department or to the dispatch center. That's correct. Okay. Mr. Morelli, this is Andy Ellis from the board. Um, I just have some, good morning. Some questions about the basement. Um, is there common areas down there in the basement or is it just all uh, access for the oh, building owner? It's access for the building owner uh, with the mechanical electrical plumbing equipment down there. So there's no storage for the tenants or, or laundry room or anything down there? Correct. Okay. Did you say, Mr. Morelli, this is Dave at the, on the board. Um, did you, I think you mentioned that the door into the basement is a fire rated and self closing door? That is correct, yes. What is the fire rating on the door? This is Laura. Uh, it's a B label. Okay. One and a half hour. Great. And this is Andy again on the board. Those doors are the ones that are at the bottom of the stairs in that hallway. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the same doors are also uh, at each apartment entry. As well as the entries to the building. Those are also an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions with the board? No. Confirmation stuff? No questions. Anybody on, is there a building code enforcement official present online that would like to make a comment regarding this case? I saw Naeem on earlier, but he's no longer here. Um, right. We went too long. <laughs> yeah, he's the uh, chief inspector for the city of Schenectady. Yeah. yeah. This is Andy from the board again. That that's an open stairwell all the way from the third floor all the way down to the basement. Is that what that, I'm looking at? That's correct. Okay.
Okay. This is Laura on the board. I, Dan, I'll have one more question for you. Um, are the stairwells either sheetrocked or plastered in their entirety so that they essentially have a fire rated wall, even I, if it's not a, a UL listing? You know? Yes, <clears throat> they are correct, yes. So to, to, to uh, clarify that a little more, the sides and back of the stairwells are sheetrocked all the way up, and obviously it's open front end to go up and down. What about at the basement level? So it looks like you come down the stair and you're in like a little hallway with a door to the front or the rear. That's so correct. Is that, is those that whole are area? But is that, are those walls also, yeah, they're fire rated or plastered? So you come down one set of stairs and there's a wall on either side with fire doors and a yeah. uh, rock walls, same on, on okay. the other side. Okay, great. Okay. I think Any ahead. other questions? This is Andy from the board again. The doors that open on the multiple floors at the opposite end of the stairwells, is that where the emergency egress, the secondary stairwell outside is? Yeah, so these are the fire escapes. Uh, Second, third floors are fire escapes, correct? The, okay. And they're actually, so it's they're actually uh, drawn they're correctly. Opposite. Those are actually okay. double hung windows, <laughs> not not doors. Okay. okay. The <laughs> yeah, we just didn't change those on the carry up. That's, okay. No problem. Good. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Any reason to go into deliberation? No. I'm good. So. Guys on. I'm good. good. Okay. I think the board's uh, no longer has any other questions for you, Ms. Morelli. Any other, we're gonna, we don't need to go into deliberation on this one. I think you've covered all of our questions and the basis here. Any other comment from you before we conclude this one? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Anybody else online that would like to make a formal comment? Okay. <clears throat> Great. <clears throat> so to conclude the hearing the petition pertains this is petition number 2023-0012 it pertains to an existing building group r2 occupancy three stories of height type 3b construction it's located at 1011 union street city of schenectady county of schenectady state of new york <clears throat> Relief is requested from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, regarding the cellar ceiling. The petitioner is requesting relief that the requirement uh, from the requirement that fire retarded ceiling or sprinkler system be provided in the cellar of, of the dwelling. <clears throat> Board makes the following findings. Number one, the building that is the subject of this petition is properly classified under Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 1, Section 433, as in multiple dwelling. Number two, the subject building is approximately 10,800 square feet in gross area and was originally constructed in about, about 1945, according to the available records. The owner believes it was constructed near 1920. <clears throat> Number three, the subject building is required to conform with the provisions of Article three of the multiple residence law as provided in section 25 in that it existed on July 1st 1952 or was converted to a multiple dwelling after July 1st 1952 and is not a hotel or similar dwelling subject to article 4 of the multiple residence law finding number four article 3 section 30 of the multiple residence law requires in every such dwelling three stories or more in height the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. Finding number five, the lowest story, the cellar ceiling of the multiple family dwelling is not enclosed with fire retardant material and does not contain a sprinkler system. A fire in the cellar could easily spread throughout the building before it is noticed. There is mechanical system piping and electrical wiring along the ceiling of this unoccupied cellar, which would make installing a fire retardant ceiling very difficult. Finding number six, as an alternative to compliance with Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law, the applicant has installed a hardwired smoke and carbon monoxide detection system interconnected from the basement to 
to areas within the building and would provide early warning event of the fire related emergency. The areas that currently are connected interconnected are the basement, the common corridors and all stair landings by the interconnected system. <clears throat> Finding number seven is the units currently, the units currently contain a battery operated detection alarm system, not interconnected. The owner is in the process of switching out the battery operated units with hardwired interconnected units to be connected to existing the existing interconnected system. And that will be completed prior to the final inspection. The end result will be that all alarms will be hardwired and interconnected. Finding number eight, the door into the basement is a one and a half hour fire rated and self closing door. Finding number nine, the doors into each apartment entry door is one and a half hour fire rated and self closing. This concludes the findings. <clears throat> The board finds that the proposed variance will not substantially adversely affect the law's provisions for health, safety, and security. Strict compliance would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, or otherwise be unwarranted because such would be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which, without a loss in the level of safety, achieve the intended objective of the law. <clears throat> Wherefore, it is determined that the application for the variance from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30B, and is hereby proposed is hereby to be granted with the following conditions. Number one, that the interconnected smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are installed and located throughout the building as required by current code. Number two, that the property owner, shall have, property owner shall have the city of Schenectady perform a formal test of the installed interconnected alarm system to ensure that all alarms are properly communicated, communicating and installed. And number three, to verify and ensure that all entrance door and every door opening into any entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected there within shall be self-closing. This concludes the conditions. Do I have a motion from the board? Floor a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Andy. Great. Thank you. I'll now poll the board. Those in favor say yay. Those opposed say yay. Ms. Coons? Yay. Mr. Ellis? Yay. Ms. Ryder? Yay. Mr. Berenger? Yay. And the chairman also votes yay. That's five yays, zero nays. And the variance is now granted. Furthermore, the decision is limited to the specific building application before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. Thank you, Mr. Morelli, for being with us today. I don't know if you're on the next future one, but this hearing, this case is now concluded. And Thank you, folks. let's. Yeah, are you with us with any of the other? Uh, not today. I'll see you again in September. Okay. All right, great. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Right. Have a great Thanks. day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any reason why we need to do another recess. That was pretty quick. Yep. Yeah. We can jump right into the next case. We're still on the record. Right. Yeah, we are still on the record. Let's stay on the record. <clears throat> Okay. Let's confirm that we have a petitioner regarding uh, yeah, they're here, BG team. BG team, perfect. If you don't mind, let's go and state your name and your address for the record. Any petitioner that's online for our next variance, which is petition number 2023-0015 regarding the 1302 Webster Street location from BG Team. Yes. If you're online, please state your name. Thank you. <clears throat> name is uh, Nick Ignatov. Uh, I'm representative of BG Team LLC. 
So I'm uh, requesting uh, relief of section 30, uh, of course, like the previous case, uh, the ceiling on the basement. So the building is five unit. Um, just give me one moment. Um, yes. I'll introduce the case and then we'll let you, we'll open it up for you to, to okay. continue with okay. your, we'll just follow the same reality here. <clears throat> okay. So this petition pertains to an existing building of group R2 occupancy, three stories in height. It is type 5B construction, wood frame unprotected, and it is located at 1302 Webster Street, City of Schenectady, yes. County of Schenectady, State of New York. <clears throat> so the petitioner is requesting relief from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws in New York, the Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 28, with regarding the stairs and entrance hall. This states that in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, the wood, wainscoting, and other combustible materials on the wall and ceiling surfaces in all halls shall be removed and replaced with uh, incombustible or other fire-resistant materials. In lieu of such removal, a sprinkler system may be installed in such halls or such wainscoting and the combustible surface may be treated or covered in a manner satisfactory to the department with a surface fire retardant approved by the department. In such a dwelling, however, any entrance door and every door opening into any entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected there within shall be self-closing. Every interior sash or opening other than a door and the walls or partitions of such halls and every window therein not opening to the other or not opening to the outer air shall be sealed with fire resistant materials. The petitioner specifically requesting relief from the requirement that combustible materials in stairs and halls be removed and replaced. <clears throat> the petitioner is also seeking relief from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws in New York, the Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, the cellar ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system. Unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department, the petitioner is specifically seeking relief from the requirement that a fire retarded ceiling or sprinkler system be provided in the cellar of the dwelling. <clears throat> Okay, at this time, I'll open it up to you, um, you go to, for a um, petitioner to present your case to the board. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, sir. So, uh, this is a five unit building, three story high, two units on uh, first and second floor, and one unit in the attic space. So, all this, Five units got separate entrances. There is no common area. Except on the back of the building, there is a fire escape for the third floor, which also works for the other uh, two apartments on the second floor. Uh, there is a interconnected alarms from the basement to each apartment, separate uh, so in the basement we have four combo uh, smoke and carbon alarms connected to each apartment. And there is a metal door on the basement, self-closing. I don't have any uh, flammable materials on this fire escape if you can see on the pictures that I provided. Everything is sheet drive, the railing is metal, the floor is uh, ceramic tiles. Okay. Also, I recently installed a heat alarm in each apartment. So additional to smoke and carbon, there is a heat alarm in each unit. Okay. 
Any questions from the board for the petitioner? Yes, this is Laura. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how how did you get to the third floor? I'm not really clear how you get there. What is hey, the uh, uh, stair pattern? Let me see what kind of pictures we got and I will explain. So. But when I look at the plan that you provided, it shows an entrance at the front center of the third floor, but how do you get, where are the stairs? Do you go, do you share the stair with the second floor stair? No, no. no. Uh, this is uh, stairs just for the third floor. No, like I said, uh, the second floor fire uh, escape also uses these stairs. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. <coughs> so is it an exterior stair? That was built additionally to the building. Uh, when they built the third floor apartment, they uh, add this like, addition just for the fire escape uh, stairs. And no, I don't see pictures. I didn't provide you pictures, but it's on the side of the building, uh, on the back of the building, let's say. There is an entrance just for this uh, guy on the third floor. Metal door, self-closing. There is uh, another uh, metal door on the second landing, which is used for these two apartments on the second floor. So does the third floor have two means of exiting? Yes, one is the main stairs that are used also That's for what? fire escape for the second floor. But also, okay. if you see the pictures that I provided on the front of the building, there is a metal uh, fire escape ladder. But, this, but the entrance into the third floor is at the front or the rear? I'm confused. On the rear, on the rear. On the rear, okay. So it's gotta be, I would imagine, in the wall right here somewhere. The building is on uh, 9th Avenue, on the corner of 9th Avenue in Webster. So I got two entrances from 9th Street and three entrances, uh, opposite. Three entrances from 9th Avenue and two entrances from uh, Webster. Mm. If you see this uh, Google Street uh, pictures. This is Dave from the board. Um, I might understand the plans that there's the interconnected hardwired alarms from the yes, basement. Sir. Yes, sir. Are there, there's four separate alarms in the basement and one yes, in sir. each unit? Yes, sir. But because they're uh, close to each other in the basement, they will go off and they will notify all uh, the apartments. Attic is also connected to the hardware system. One, two, three, three. Where? This is Jared from the board. Where's the Weems coding that's coming into question? Is it only, it's, I don't see it in a stairwell. Is it in a stairwell or? There is no wainscoting at all. So my understanding is uh, there is a picture for the basement door. So probably this is the area that it's on concern on. Okay. 
So when you go down the stair into the basement, this is Laura, I'm sorry. Yes, you go Laura. down the stair into the basement, yeah. Um, yeah. there is a wood board wall that separates the stair from the area where the furnaces are, right? No. It's shown in the photographs. It's painted wall. yellow. There's, no, 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 no. That, that picture is from the basement itself. And this metal right. door that you see, it's a door separating the basement on uh, two different uh, uh, areas. That's that's not the wainscoting. That's not well, the outside. There's a the photograph that you provided. Yes. Shows four boilers in a row. Yes. And well, let me get my photos straight here. Yeah. Um, right. And you're looking, you're, you have your back to the front and you're looking down toward the metal wall and there's yes. a, there's a wood board wall on your left. And I presume the stair is on the other side of that. Is that correct? Looking down. The, uh, the metal see, door with the brown uh, wall? No, no, not the brown wall. The uh -huh. Yellow. The yellow. It's surrounded by yellow. So. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see what we're looking at, but, you know, can you see this? It's probably too far from the camera. Um, this yellow wall we're talking about. What yes. is that? Okay. So, uh, one of the pre previous owner built like uh, a storage units in, in the basement, which are no, mm -hmm. not in use in the moment. So, that's what you see. Okay. So when you come down the stair, as you come down, it's completely open to the basement. There's no enclosure at all at the bottom. So you're going down the stairs and there is a metal door, self-closing metal door. When you open the, the metal door, you see these four uh, boilers in this metal uh, right. yellow. So, so what is the wall made out of if the door is in a wall, presumably. What is what is the wall that surrounds the stair made out of? That's part of the the foundation of the building. That's a brick. On, on one side, and what's on the other side? Yes. On the other side is uh, wood area. Yes, wood. Okay. 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 This is under the stairs. Understood. So you have a wood wall, no sheetrock, no plaster. No, I didn't say that. Okay. I said that on both sides, there is a foundation of the building. And just under the stairs going to the third floor, there is uh, no sheetrock there, which is uh, easy to be installed uh, from the pictures that you see. So this brown, uh, the picture with a uh, metal door and brown uh, wall, that yes. is yeah, the only that. area that it's exposed with uh, wood. And there is a separate door on the top of the stairs going to the basement, which is also self closing and metal door. I'm sorry, I didn't provide those pictures. Is that a spring? It is mm -hmm. a spring. Closing door? Yep. Mm -hmm. So the door is self closing by a mechanical spring that we see in this photo? Yes. It's just a spring. Are there any other stairwells that would have just open wood? No, sir. That we may be discussing. This is just uh, the stairs going to the basement. Like I said, there is metal door uh, yeah. to the basement and metal metal door before the stairs going down uh, to the basement. Okay. Can you confirm with me the number of units in the building? I think you said five. Yes, sir. 
Five. The base, the basement. So I see two units on the first, two units on the second floor, and then one unit on the third floor. Yes, sir. Boiler and it's got its own boiler and water heater. Upstairs. Yes. And so, do any of the alarm, the interconnected alarms, reach the third floor unit? Are those yes, connected sir. to the basement alarms? Yes, sir. Well, there's. If there's only four alarms in the basement, which unit are we missing? Or is there one unit connected to one, two units connected so to it one? It seems unit. like they're using one of these four alarms to give signal to the the other smoke alarm on the third floor. So you know that right. you can use like 12 alarms on the same uh, signal cable. Understood. Yep. Yeah. So they're using one of these alarms for the third floor. Okay. And every time when I have rental inspection, the representative from city is connected is that in it and they do work. We had a similar case to this where there was multiple alarms in the basement. Um, uh, no, sir. The other we, case. We, well, is... we have, I'm, I'm explaining to you that we uh -huh. did have a similar case where we had multiple alarms in a basement and the result of that was that we asked that a single alarm be provided in the basement that's connected to all units. That's not a problem because all the signal cables are close to each other in the matter of minutes to be converted. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions from members? <clears throat> this is uh, Chris Jensen. I was wondering, just for clarification, he said the second entrance on the third floor was a ladder? It is. He said it was a fire escape. Fire escape with a ladder. Okay. Oh, that's in front of the building. The yes, metal ladder. Yeah, on the Ninth mm -hmm. Avenue side of the building. Uh, on Webster side. <clears throat> oh yes, I'm sorry, Webster side. Yeah. Okay. Any concerns with this combustible material in the hall in the stair? I'm not really sure where it is. I mean, yeah. It's in the basement. I think it looks like the old. Just that. Yeah. Yeah, down in it. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, I'm seeing that's what I'm understanding. Like that's where that is. Do you know where that's that is? Kind of... I know. Um, this is Laura on the board. Can you tell us again? Where is the picture with the, the metal door with the brown painted wall? Where is that in the basement? So this is on the bottom of the stairs going to the basement. So you have this metal door on your left side. But on the yep. top of the stairs, there is additional metal door just for separation of this stairs going to the, to the basement. Like I said, I'm sorry I didn't provide these pictures. And there is also another door, again, metal door, self-closing, uh, for the stairs going to the third floor. So there is uh, like three doors. One door to get on this uh, closed uh, fire escape stairs. One uh, after this front door, one door 
going to the basement and another door, second door for the stairs going up. So everything is separated. Uh, that, that's my point. Metal doors, the stairs going to the third floor is all sheet rock. Uh -huh. Metal railing. Any other questions? Is there anybody online that would like to make a comment? Uh, I don't know if we had a code enforcement official connect back in or not. No, they I don't see them, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Members, we want to talk about this one real quick, or it's the combustible material that I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm not very clear on. Yeah. Figure out how to do that. Okay. So we are going to go into deliberation on this one. Um, so at this time, let's go off the record. On the record. Great. So let's just, uh, we're coming out of the recess and matter petition number. <laughs> 2023-0015, um, the petitioner is the BG team, and Mr. The petitioner may present here a few additional, some additional information presents to the board. You may proceed. Thank you. Thank you. So let me find, share. So for the record, the petitioner is sharing some photos for the board to receive. Uh, so that's, that's exterior. That's an exterior. Yes. So uh, that's an answer to your question, how the guy on the third floor is getting to his apartment. So this is on the back of the building. You have one mm -hmm. metal door in front. Then you have a second metal door and that was the door that I was trying to explain that separate the, the basement stairs from the stairs going to the third floor. So on this picture, on the left side are the stairs going down to the basement. It's not visible from this yeah, left. Right. So you go through that, that first door and you take a left to get down the stairs? Yes. So I or got you another go to go picture. Or you go straight you to go see, uh, Do you see the pictures that I'm changing or? Yes, 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 we do. Okay, so that's the stairs going up. There is no wine coating. Plaster, right? Got it. This is sheet rock. Yep. Yes. And again, meadow railing, ceramic tiles. Uh, this yeah. is the meadow door that is used from these two apartment on the second floor for fire escape. That's a door on the first floor. That's another door for the balcony. I see it. The stair goes right down. And uh, I'll so another perspective. And I'm trying to find uh, this picture for the basement stairs. So this is for the second floor fire escape. So there is a second uh, exit on each apartment on the mm -hmm. second floor. They're using this. And then they got to go through these metal doors. Right. That is uh, private exactly. property keep out and use these uh, stairs to get out. 
give me a second. I'll find these pictures for the basement right here. So that's that's the stairs going to the basement. Okay. On the left side, this brown is a uh, painted foundation bricks. So you have sheet track everywhere. Yes. Yeah. In 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 the bottom on the left side, it's the metal door that uh, you have uh, like a picture on your file. It's just too many pictures I, I cannot send you all, but I'm glad we have opportunity so I can show you. Okay. So where is the wood frame in the stairwell? Is there? I think he needs to go back to City of Schenectady and ask him. Yeah. He may we're find that there isn't any. I don't see yeah, any. We're any trying to determine. Outside Wayne's building. Right. Like, yeah. Same on on the outside. Yeah, we saw the wood. Next year, finish. That's not Wayne's building. Right. I would agree. Yeah. Right. I think we should adjourn it and have him go back to the city. So, to fill you in, the board were were not clear, and of course, we don't have access to the building code enforcement official who wrote up this section 28 that pertains to a wood or Wayne's coating in your stairwell. It yes, does not I appear that you have that. And no. we don't we don't know why that was written up. Um, so a way through this is that the board will adjourn that section. Can, 20 can I, uh, inter Chairman, can I interrupt yeah, again? I, I spoke with uh, Erica and uh, Erica said we would either have to adjourn the whole case <laughs> or um, make an approval or a denial. Okay. So okay, we can't adjourn just specific sections. Okay. Yeah, we can't do that because it would have to adjourn the entire case. Okay. okay. So we could make a condition in there that any of the the Wayne's coating that is there would have to be either removed or. Um, you know, I guess I, I didn't see in the pictures because I was talking to Erica behind the scenes to find out about. It doesn't. But, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Like there is any Wayne's coating. It doesn't seem like there is any indoor Wayne's coating unless it's on some other stairwell that he's not showing us. Um, we think maybe. I mean, the only wood we see is on the exterior of the building, which that's no different than having wood clapboard on the exterior of the building and walking past that. Uh, so. We're still not really sure what the city code official meant by wing coding. Yeah, because the section is for stairs and entrance halls only. Right, not for exterior. Right. So have you seen all the pictures for the stairs and entrance halls? Is that what's been shown already? Well, that's everything that yeah. we see. We saw the rear one. Um, do you have pictures of the front stair that goes up to the second floor? I'm trying to find something. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, well, it's a stair we haven't seen yet. So far, none of those stairways have any. Mm -hmm. Right, no, we haven't seen any yet. Okay, this is the stairs. For the apartment on the second floor front, Understood. which is on the Webster, uh, yes, Webster side. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. No one. Yeah. No. So maybe uh, we just I'll try to find the other stairs for the second floor on the Ninth Avenue side. Yeah. But it's sheet track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is part of the apartment. There is uh, no wainscoting. You see the, the the style of the building. Everywhere is just sheet track. Nobody is uh, putting wainscoting for beautifications. Mm -hmm. They must have meant that's that outdoor space. So we have two options. Area. We can. It seems like this is a inconsequential. I hate to adjourn the whole case for the petitioner because we are, we're, we're as a board, you know, actually gonna, we're okay with section 30 and we'll give you some uh, conditions there. But yeah. 
So to adjourn the whole case, does that benefit you? We can deny section 28 because you already meet the code. And okay. Dan, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong with that in saying that to, to keep this moving, we can say, you know, we say denial, you, you must remove. If there is Wayne's courting, it's got to be removed and just meet the code of section 28 and, that, right. and then section 30 we can approve. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that seems to be the right way to go. Sorry, this is Erica Krieger just going to interrupt Mr. Chairman with your permission. Um, rather Please. than to deny it, it might just be um, um, the, the applicant could um, withdraw the, his request for a variance from that particular section rather than have right a denial now? on his record. Yeah. Can we, can we do that Without. in the board currently, right, right now in the meeting? Yeah. Okay. That way, if by chance, you know, next year he That's what we were trying to read through, his, yeah. He can just start another case. I would prefer that and that's, that's for the petitioner. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we will Nicolai, make that. does it make sense to you? Does that make sense with, to you what she's saying? Yes, to withdraw section 28 for the Wayne Scotting that I don't have and yeah. you don't have yes. Yes. section 30 for the seller sailing. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, only because then it doesn't affect you if, if for some reason you had to come back to us for, you know, whatever reason in the future, um, it, it won't count against you negatively with respect to that section. Okay, I understand. Okay. Can we enter that as a finding of fact? How do we do that formally, Erica? Um, yes, this is Erica again. Yes, it can be a finding um, the, at the petitioner's request, uh, he, or he, the petitioner is withdrawing his request for relief from section whatever. 28, yeah. 28. Okay, so I have to say it? Or I, I he, have he would to have to, right. he, um, he would, he could say that now officially. And then it okay. can become a finding when the board makes its official decision. I understand. So if we have the record, I want to withdraw my asking for section 28 stairs and entrance holes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have that. <clears throat> that helps us. Any other? Questions or comments? No. Okay. Nicolay, any other questions or comments for you before we conclude this one? No, uh, I thank appreciate you. your patience with me. Okay. No, thank you for pulling up those photos. Those uh, those helped us through here. So. <clears throat> Dan, is there a way to? For him to enter those photos into the file, can he send those in a way manner so that we do have record of the pictures that we saw today? If you want, I can send you to your to some email address. No problem. We will make sure that that there's an avenue there to to get those photos into your file. Yes. Yeah, you have you have my email address, Nicola. You can actually send the email those to me. Um, if they're too large, we'll figure something out. You can let's just communicate, and then I'll I'll send them to Albany uh, to get them in the record. Okay. Sound okay, Erica. Erica, Erica are you still there? <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to move forward. Um, I think you could add another finding that additional pictures were were provided during the hearing that uh, showed that, in fact, that. There, yeah, that there didn't appear to be any wainscoting or paneling or anything in the interior stairwells. You know what I mean? Something like that. Thank you. I will.
Okay, just bear with us as I get the thoughts down and we'll conclude this. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so we will conclude this hearing. Uh, the petition pertains to an existing building of Group R2 occupancy, three stories in height, Type 5B construction, located at 1302 Webster Street, City of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. The petitioner is requesting relief from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws in New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, regarding the cellar ceilings. <clears throat> the petitioner has formally withdrew the request from relief of Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 28, regarding the stairs and entrance halls. The board makes the following findings. Number one, the petitioner has provided additional photos during the hearing that showed no evidence of wainscoting or other combustible materials in the walls and ceiling surfaces of the stairs and entrance hall and is the reason for his withdrawal of section 28 during the hearing. <clears throat> Number two, the building that is a subject of this petition is properly classified under chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 1, Section 433 of the Multiple dwelling. It is a multiple dwelling. <clears throat> Number three, the subject building is approximately 5,500 square feet in gross area and was originally constructed around 1940. Finding number four, the subject building contains five units total, two on the first floor, two on the second floor, and one on the third floor. The basement is unoccupied. Finding number five, the subject building is required to conform with the provisions of Article 3 of, of the Multiple Residence Law as provided in Section 25 and that it existed on July 1st, 1952 or was converted to a multiple dwelling after July 1st, 1952 and is not a hotel or similar dwelling subject to Article 4 of the Multiple Residence Law. Finding number six, combustible materials. Uh, finding number six is not... We've already addressed that. Please disregard what I started there. The new finding number six is Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law requires in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, the ceiling of the cellar or the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. Finding number seven, the lowest story cellar ceiling of this multiple family dwelling is not enclosed with fire retardant material and does not contain a sprinkler system. A fire in the cellar could easily spread throughout the building before it is noticed. There is mechanical system piping and electrical wiring along the ceiling of this unoccupied cellar, which would make installing a fire retardant ceiling very difficult. Finding number eight, the applicant has proposed and demonstrate the alternative of the installation of the alternative as an alternative they would install have installation of electrically smoke wired smoke and heat detecting alarms interconnected to signal devices on each story that would provide early warning in the event of a related a fire related emergency finding number 10 is the door into the basement is fire rated and self closing That concludes the findings. <clears throat> the board finds that the proposed variance will not substantially adversely affect the law's provisions for health, safety, and security. Strict compliance would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, and would otherwise be unwarranted because such would be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which without a loss in the level of safety achieve the intended objective of the law.
<clears throat> Wherefore, it is determined that the application for a variance from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple, Resi Law, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, B, and is hereby granted with the following conditions. Number one, that the four alarms grouped together in the basement shall be combined and wired into one alarm, and limiting the three alarms, and this one alarm is connected to at least one alarm in each unit in the building. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, that the existing interconnected smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are installed and located throughout the building as required by current code. That the building, number three, that the property owner shall have the city of Schenectady perform a formal test of the installed interconnected alarm system to ensure all alarms are properly communicating and installed. Okay. And number four, that any entrance door and every door opening into any entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected there within shall be self-closing. And that concludes the conditions. Do I have a motion from the board? Jared motions. Do I have a second? second. Jackie seconds. Thank you. I'll now pull the board. Those in favor say yay. And those opposed say yay. Ms. Coons? Yay. Mr. Ellis? Yay. Ms. Ryder? Yay. Mr. Berenger? Yay. And the chairman, Mr. Brown, will also say yay. That's five yays, zero nays. The variance is now granted. Furthermore, the decision is limited to the specific building and application before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. That concludes this case. Thank you very much. I am going to say let's take at least let's do a five minute recess and go for a drink. Um, let's go off the record. Thank off you. the record. On the record. Thank you. <clears throat> so we're moving on to a fourth petition for the day. It's regarding petition number 2023-01 or 0016. The petitioner again is from BG team. Petition pertains to an existing building of group R2 occupancy, three stories in height, type 5B, wood frame unprotected construction. It is located at 709 Kane Street, City of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. Petitioner is requesting relief from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30. Cellar ceilings, which states that in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, the cellar of the ceiling, the ceiling of the cellar or the lowest story, there be no cellar shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. And the petition is also seeking relief from Chapter 61 B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31 inside the cellar stairs it states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above and all multiple in, in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door located as the department may approve petitioner requests leave to not provide a fire rated partition in the cellar stairs okay at this time i would open up for the petitioner to present your case uh, Nicolay, please state again your name for the record and your address um, and your position. Then you may also put out the case. The My name was... is uh, Nick Ignatov, uh, representative of BG Team LLC. Uh, address is 15 Johnson Road, Latham, New York. And I'm Representing the building of 709 Crane Street, Schenectady. It's a brick building, three story high, six units. 
two units on each four. So what we got there is we have smoke and combo, uh, smoke and uh, carbon combo alarms on each landing. And in the inner part of the apartment, mm -hmm. behind the front door on each apartment, and all these combo arms are interconnected, including one alarm in the basement. So we got one in the basement, three combo arms on the front stairs, one inside each apartment. Also, we recently installed heat alarms inside each apartment. And they are all interconnected. Inside the apartment, we also have smoke alarms and carbon monoxide, which are not interconnected. In the basement, I have only water heaters and they are electric. Okay. The heating system for uh, each apartment is a uh, forced air furnace inside the boiler room, which is inside the apartment. There is also a smoke detector inside this boiler room. All the doors are metal and self-closing. Great. <clears throat> All right, let's open it up. Any questions from the board members? This is Jared. So I, I'm just recapping. How many? So if there were a fire to occur in the basement, there's one detector that would notify each apartment? Yes, this. Uh... It's a combo smoke and carbon in the basement, which is interconnected to all the other alarms. There is an alarm in each side, each apartment behind the front door. And there is also an alarm in the landing between the two doors on each floor. Okay. Which is visible on the drawings. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is Laura from the board. So, so all the other smokes within the apartment are just connected within that one apartment, correct? So the, the, the basement is only connected to one device in, in the living room of the apartment or it's connected to all of them? No, it's connected just for one smoke right. combo, uh, smoke and carbon combo, which right. is uh, above the front door. Got it. Inside okay. the apartment. Right. And so, right. So otherwise, all the other smoke detectors within one apartment are only interconnected within that apartment. They are not interconnected. They're not, they're not interconnected at all. They're okay. just individuals. Got it. Okay. All right. All right. That's the piece I'm missing. Okay. I'm interpreting that all the green circles are interconnected on these plants. Right. Okay. If you not correct, uh, the green circles are combo smoke and yeah. carbon. Next to oh, them, the yellow the one is the heat alarm. So all the greens and yellow, they are interconnected. All the greens and yellow. Okay, perfect. Right. The red and the blue that you see, that's a regular alarms and they are not interconnected. They are inside the apartment.
Okay. Any questions or comments? This is Andy from the board. The stairwell into the basement, does that just go to the exterior of the building or does it go into the building? Okay, so the building is brick building. On one of the pictures you can see uh, stairs going down and you have uh, stone wall on both sides basically these yeah. are stairs outside of the building this is just okay. uh, fire escape stairs which are not inside okay and that's the on the upper floors right yeah that fire escape is only on the upper floors i think andy was asking about the stair into the basement that's what I'm saying. You act, yeah. But, yeah. That's the next okay. about The picture on the last yeah. page, right? Yeah. With the stone wall on both sides. That's the way you get in and out of the basement. And that, okay. that yes. door so that's a, like a, yeah. leads to the exterior of the building. Yes. So let me find some pictures that okay. you can understand. Yep. Do you see this? Yes. Okay, so that's the stairs going to the basement. On the left side, you see the brick uh, wall of the building itself. And the wooden part, it is just the back porch. Yeah. It's not back porch, it's just stairs. Yes, yeah, it's four stairs. Got it. Questions or comments? Thoughts? Nope. I missed the discussion on section 31. Mm -hmm. That's this here. That's the missing mm -hmm. stairs. Mm -hmm. It's not a close. And that's what the picture that's was. That's what that picture was. Okay. This is Andy from the board. That, where that basement stairs is we see a picture of the bottom side of another set of stairs is that uh secondary egress to the yep. other units yes okay. sir can you show that picture again please yeah can you see it yeah Right. Yeah. So, is there no door yeah. down to the basement? There is. And the, the stair that the stair that connects that back porch area to the basement. Yes, there is. The is there a door at the top or the bottom? Picture of it. Bottom. Let me, let me okay. find it. That's what this. No, that's what this room is. Here. So you go down the stairs, and this door this is, is at the, the bottom. bottom. Okay. The so left, and then you open into the nicer basement area and then there's the white door into that other basement area right it looks of okay understood okay 
Understood. Got it. So. Okay. How do you feel about that? Well, so a fire in the basement Secondary would be contained, mass. but it would be contained in the basement. From these stairs. From these stairs. Mm -hmm. From the back stair. Right. Yeah, it would be contained to either in that little room by the mm -hmm. white door, or right. if it was in the white room, it would be contained by the metal door to those back stairs, stairs that have the two stone right. walls. So no, actually, the main this was a boiler room at some point, and the previous <laughs> owner removed all the gas equipment and installed electric water heaters. So what yeah. you see, this is a sheet track, five feet, four by four, but there is no more uh, gas uh, units, just electric, which is still fire hazard in some degree. So. Is there an alarm in each portion of the basement? Yes, sir. Yeah. There is uh, one combo yeah. alarm in the basement area that is interconnected to all the other alarms that we already discussed. It's on the drawing on the basement, and this green circle is the interconnected hardwire. There is also another smoke detector in the boiler room. In the boiler room. Mm -hmm. There's one in that back porch too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I think I understand. We go with 30 and 31. Okay. Any yeah. reason to deliberate? No. From any on this? I don't I'm think so. Deliberate. This was a piece. Yeah, yeah, I think it's more yeah. straightforward. Mm -hmm. Clarified. <clears throat> okay, we have no reason to go into deliberation. If there's any other questions or comments from anyone else online? Please, now is the time. Great. Bear with us as we conclude this hearing. We'll go through our findings like we did before and lay out any conditions. Bear with me one second. So this petition pertains to an existing building, Group R2 occupancy, three stories in height, Type 5B construction. It's located at 709 Crane Street, City of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. <clears throat> Relief is requested from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, Seller Ceilings. Relief is also requested from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, uh, Inside Cellar Stairs. With respect to petition number 2023-0016, the board makes the following findings. <clears throat> number one, 
the building that is the subject of this petition is properly classified under Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 1, Section 433, as a multiple dwelling. Finding number two, the subject building is approximately 7,900 square feet in gross square area and was originally constructed around 1940. Finding number three, the subject building is required to conform with the provisions of Article 3 of the Multiple Residence Law as provided in Section 25 in that it existed on July 1st, 1952 or was converted to a multiple dwelling after July 1st, 1952 and is not a hotel or similar dwelling subject to Article 4 of the Multiple Residence Law. Finding number four, Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law requires in every such dwelling, three stories or more in height, the, cellars, the ceiling of the cellar or the lowest story, if there be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. Finding number five, the lowest story cellar ceiling of this multiple dwell family dwelling is not enclosed with fire retardant material and does not contain a sprinkler system. A fire in the cellar will, could easily spread throughout the building before it is noticed. There is medical or mechanical system piping and electrical wiring along the ceiling of this unoccupied cellar, which would make installing a fire retardant ceiling very difficult. Finding number six, as an alternative to compliance with our Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law, the applicant has installed a hardwired smoke and carbon monoxide detection system that's interconnected from the basement to each unit individually and would provide early warning in the event of fire-related emergency. Finding number seven, there is one alarm in the basement that is hardwired and interconnected to an alarm in each unit. The interconnected alarm system is also connected to alarms within the common areas. I'd like to referencing the provided plans within the exhibit to understanding all the green circles noted as carbon plus smoke monoxide alarms, smoke plus carbon monoxide alarms, and the yellow circles noted as heat are a part of the hardwired interconnected system. The red smoke and blue carbon alarms are individual and not connected to the interconnected system. <clears throat> Finding number eight, the door into the basement is fire rated and self-closing. This concludes the findings. The proposed variance will not substantially adversely affect the law's provisions for health, safety, and security. Strict compliance would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, and would otherwise be unwarranted because such would be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which without a loss and level of safety achieve the intended objective of the law. <clears throat> Wherefore, it is determined that the application for variance from Chapter 6.1 Dash B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, and Section 31 B, and is hereby granted with the following conditions. That the existing smoke and carbon monoxide detect detectors are installed and located throughout the building as required by current code. That the interconnected devices as provided on the plans are as indicated. Number two, that the property owner shall have the city of Schenectady perform a formal test of the installed interconnected alarm system to ensure all alarms are properly communicating and installed. And number three, that any entrance door and every door opening into any entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected there within shall be self-closing. This concludes the conditions. Do I have a motion? Andy, I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Now I'll pull the board. Those in favor, say yay. Those opposed, say yay. Ms. Coons? Yay. Mr. Ellis? Yay. Ms. Ryder? Yay. Mr. Berenger? Yay. And the chair, Mr. Bremel, also say yay. That's five yays, zero days. The variance is now granted. Furthermore, this decision is limited to the specific building and application before it as contained with the within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. This now concludes this case. Thank you, Nick, for being a part and with us today. 
Let's go off the record. Thank you for working. Off the record. On the record. Thank you. So we are moving on to our the fourth one today. Uh, fifth. It's regarding uh, the cases regarding petition number 2023-0017. On the record, the petitioner is not present during this case. The board is going to discuss the case, figure out if it's something that we can decide on today um, without the petitioner present, and um, we will move forward in that direction. So I will... Um, Open up the case. The petition pertains to an existing building, Group R2 occupancy, three stories in height. It's type 3B construction located at 27 Closed Street, City of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. Relief is requested from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, the Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, the cellar ceilings. Relief is also requested from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, it has to do with the inside cellar stairs. <clears throat> so then now the board will go on discussions to discuss the case and we'll take it from here. Um, I guess any question, any thoughts, comments from the board members? I just don't know, would we, is there anything that they could do to convince us that that door, the cellar stairs, was adequate, even if they were here? Or would we just look at that door like that's not? I think I agree with that. That's not, it's not I want to look correct. I, I, I mean, if we came back here in July and they were here and said anything about that door, I don't know. They've already said that they think that it's. And our answer is no. It's not. So I, I don't know what else they could do if they were here. And what is what is the language of that section of the code that we're does it say it needs to be a fire rated door or just a fire resistant door? Let's repeat it. So just for the record, so it's understood, we are looking at the deliberating on section 31 that talks about the inside cellar stairs. Mm -hmm. It states that every stair leading from the cellar to the floor above in all old multiple dwellings shall be enclosed with fire retarded partitions and shall be equipped with a fire retarded self-closing door located as the department may approve. So one could argue that the metal does fire retard. But as Andy pointed out, it's got a wood frame. True. I think it has so. a wood frame, yeah. I think the so, wood frame is the issue. I don't. Many of the others might have also. Yeah, we're we talking for the frames. frames. Other doors look like they are purchased fire rated doors <clears throat> with wood trim around them, but they look like newer modern right. door assemblies. Whereas that thing looks like it was an old door that somebody put. Right, metal right. On. it's probably just a wood door. This is Dan with the Department of State again. I just talked to the city of Schenectady code official. Um, one of, he's not on this case, but he's willing to call in and try to find out what the issue is based on their records. So uh, he should be calling in hopefully any minute. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. So it looks like the access to the basement is also access to secondary 
into the first floor kitchen. Yes. Yes. So it's not a primary. Right, the primary would be that front, front. stairway. Looks like it's a egret, fire egress for the remaining floors. That stairwell goes all the way up to the third floor. Back yeah, stairwell. And there's, no there's one, one doorway out the back. Yep. Right. There's also a fire escape in the back of the building that's not drawn on our plans. It is, right? From the back bedroom and then the other back mm -hmm. kitchen area. It looks right. Like. The third floor bedroom and the second floor kitchen. almost not yeah. necessary. Right? Especially if you need to be here, so. Yeah. Prasad with City of Schenectady Code Enforcement, sitting in on behalf of Mary Lou Padone. Hi, Dan. Thank you. Yeah, we were just deliberating the case. The petitioner is not present currently. Uh, this is Dave. I'm the chairman running the case here. So um, we were trying to figure out a little bit about the case. And what's holding this up is um, there's requesting the relief from Section 31 of the multiple residence law that requires a uh, fire retarded door and a rated stair um, into the cellar. So okay. we're seeing a picture that shows a door that looks like it's been cladded with metal. And it, I mean, we don't know if that door is wood that's just been you know, that has metal around it, it seems like to us that that door needs to be replaced in order to meet the requirement of this section. So my understanding is that there's, I know we've, we've come across some doors that are, they're wood doors, but they're wrapped in like, um, like some sort of sheet metal. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking at. So those are the, that's like when they, uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, years ago they were, when they created mechanical boiler rooms, whatever, I guess that's what they were implementing to, if there was a wood door, because some of the locations where the doors were, were kind of a weird or offset door. And from what we've seen, they would wrap it with some sort of, I don't, I don't know what the ratings are for these uh, sheet metal or metal that goes over the wooden door. So would that, it, would that trigger this, um, this write up of them not meeting section 31 is seeing that kind of door. Right, like 
is that what what Mary Lou uh, why she would have I think you know I, I, would, I, I would think I, I, I would think so the section 31 applies I uh, can't recall exactly but that applies the 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 seller stairway right yeah that's the one fire that's that. rated and coming and the door has to be a self-closure fire rated yep. door exactly Oh, yeah, fire, so fire, retarded petitions, fire retarded petitions and equipped with a fire retarded self closing door located as, as approved. Yeah. Yeah. So that so I don't know if you guys would approve of whatever metal wrap is around the door or would she have to remove that metal, metal wrap and maybe try like a fire retardant like a paint like an intermittent paint. Or just replace. Well, the door. we're concerned with the door frame and the door jam because that's not wrapped with the metal, so. What about doing the fire retarding paint? I didn't think about that. Because they, they do sell, I know they do have a paint, it's pretty expensive. You're talking about like three to $400. Um, it has a rating of one to two hour. Because if it's a weird door size, and then you try and cut a fire rated, uh, rated door. Yeah, you're not, you can't do that. You, you got to get so special order or, yeah. It might. Yeah, that that's might what I'm saying. Because some of these doors are like, they're weird shaped or they're like an odd size. So you're talking yeah. about like customing a fire rated door where probably looking at probably $500 or more. Yeah. Yeah, it does look like a, at least a very narrow door. You can't see the top of it. It might All be right. a short door. So maybe the fire rated paint on the door jam because there's definitely a piece of wood where the mm -hmm. the oh, yeah, goes into. That. Yeah, I agree. the only reason mm -hmm. i'm bringing that up because we had a property uh a while ago maybe about last year or so i was dealing with and um the problem was that he had wayne's coating in the common hallway so instead of removing the wayne's coating based on the code for the common mm -hmm. hallway we had him um um use the intermessant paint which was that's where i came to find out that that was part of the mre was like fire retardant some kind of fire retardant coating over the uh wings coating if that's correct i mean based on one of those i i know there's a i, I know there was a section in the mrl there that you have to remove the wings coating or fire retardant with something right got it right is that correct? I mean, at least, yes. Yeah, that sounds, I mean, that sounds appropriate. What yeah, you, that was section so 28, would, not, not on this case, but that was a prior case we did here today. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, this I mean, this one's only for 30 and 31, but it's, but your point is that you could apply the intumescent paint to make it fire retarded. That is correct. If and that would be uh, okay with you guys. Space, would the city make sure that that stays when you do your MRL inspection? Well, like, what we do, we have the, well, what we do, we had the owner um, had a notarized letter and the manufacturer spec paperwork posted there saying that this is what they did. And we came and we, and we took a look at it and make sure it was the right product. And we kept the paperwork in our scanning electronically to the property that, if that was to be removed or disturbed for, for whatever reason, we had to make sure that they coated back with the same intimate fire retardant paint or whatever was needed at the time, or if anybody does work in that area. Exactly, so your office would make sure of that. Yeah, because that would be part, that's something we would have to scan into their, to their property itself. For their ROP? Correct. Okay. Unless there's something else, unless they prefer wrapping it, I mean, I don't know what 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 other option. If you guys would approve of that, of that some sort of sheet metal, I, I can't say what the fire rating of that metal would be that they currently have. If you guys would approve that, but I mean, I've, I, I'm not sure if you guys have ever came across that where you've seen some of these wooden doors wrapped in metal. No, I mean, you're not getting the, the perimeter of the door. Like, even if you paint it, I don't think you could paint the jams of the door. 
You could. I mean, you could, but I don't know. Then it doesn't close. I mean, that interface and paint is usually pretty thick. Right. Mm -hmm. It's usually pretty heavy coating. Yeah. So you're really just the, you know, the faces of the doors. And again, it doesn't say rated. It's just bright retarded. Retarded. Right. Retarded. I mean. I mean, if they sand down, that would jam a little bit. Yeah, you could. And then apply it. Try to get some. And then, like, the concern of it. Wearing away over time, that's just going to be something that's going to be looked at when they have their inspections from the city. We don't know what type of hot water heaters and if they're in the furnace room or they're in the other area of the basement. Sure. We don't know if there's any other. I see a picture here also with. Um, Quite a few quarts and five gallon plus cans of paint stain in the basement. Mm -hmm. If the door at the top of the stairs is fire rated and it only costs five hundred dollars in a six unit building. Or a three unit. Deny that variance. Well, I'm just looking at fire retarded self closing door. Yeah, because it does say that it, the furnace room is fire rated and has a fire rated self closing door. Okay. <coughs> right, but we don't know what else is in that That's fire. True. We don't. You know, are the hot water heaters electric or are they gas and each unit like the last case? I don't. I don't see anything on the layout for the basement that shows if there's multiple rooms or no it shows it all wide open so the basement isn't even accurately diagrammed and this door is located yeah into so the stairwell right into Second, the secondary interior egress through all three floors So I don't know. I, I, I'm having a hard time with that. Well, given that it was flagged by the local official, uh, I'm feeling she must have felt it was unacceptable. Yeah. Right. right. So it's either replace it right. as a condition. You know, it's approved with on the condition that that door's replaced with a fire rated door. Well, yeah. that would just be a denial of or that section. Right. Or denial. Of that right. There would be a denial of that section to get to replace it. A condition would be using the intumescent paint if we grant right. that. Correct. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Correct. The door looks like it's at the top of the stairs. That's in question. So mm -hmm. the yes. the walls of the stairwell going down is really not part of this because it's at the top. If it's sheetrocked, it probably meets the definition of fire retardant. Okay. Right. It's not. But fire -rated. we don't know if the underside yeah, right, of that. Right, right below that. Right, right below that. Know. In the basement, there's no. Yeah. Is there. A, the other question I have is the underside of that stairs, is Above that drywall? Right. Yeah, that's, for a that that's a good point. Well, is that that picture? Yeah. This which, is, which one is that? Is that in the C? C. Of the C group? That's. Oh, let's see. Oh, this one maybe? Oh, I guess that's it, yeah. With the bright light on the lower end corner. That yellow wall, it paints up the yeah. underneath of the stairs above it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is that the okay. door we're seeing with the rivets in it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly right. Opened. Yeah. Right, so I guess it's really just, a, it's the door. door. That's the door. It's the door. door. So, so it's either we like this and we do intermessive paint around the jams and deny call it, it, or we deny it and tell them that they need to put a fire in the door. I don't love that it's right into your, your stairwell. Like that's yeah. the alarms go off. 
it tells them early warning to get out, but if that stairwell has no. a fire in it, right? right. Although it's so do a denial motion and take a vote. Approve. Right. Approve the first one and deny the second one. Right. Because I think we're all in agreement that the first one is section 30 is okay. Yes. Yeah. So someone do a motion for approval of 30 and denial of 31. With it. Does that work? Okay. Okay. Hold on a second. All right, bear with us, everyone online. Let me just. We're okay with the locations of the alarms all shown on the plans, right? I'm fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'll conclude this one and we'll go through it. So the petition pertains to an existing building group R2 occupancy, three stories in height of type 3B construction, located at 27 Close Street, City of Schenectady, County of Schenectady, State of New York. Relief is requested from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30, regarding the cellar ceilings. Relief is also requested from Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, Inside Cellar Stairs. <laughs> With regarding to petition number 2023-0017, the board makes the following findings. The building that is the subject of this petition is properly classified under Chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York. Multiple residence law, Article 1, Section 4, 33, as a multiple dwelling. Number two, the, the subject building is approximately 3,226 square feet in gross area and was originally constructed around 1916. Number three, the subject building is required to conform with the provisions of Article 3 of the multiple residence law as provided in Section 25, in that it existed on July 1st, 1952, or was converted to a multiple dwelling after July 1st, 1952. And is not a hotel or similar dwelling subject to Article 4 of the Multiple Residence Law. Finding number four, Article 3, Section 30 of the Multiple Residence Law requires in every such dwelling three stories or more in height, <coughs> ceiling of the cellar or of the lowest story, be no cellar, shall be fire retarded or be equipped with a sprinkler system unless such ceiling has already been plastered to the satisfaction of the department. 
Number five, the lowest story cellar ceiling of this multiple family dwelling is not enclosed in fire retardant material and does not contain a sprinkler system. A fire in the cellar could easily spread throughout the building before it is noticed. <clears throat> there is mount mechanical system piping and electrical wiring along the ceiling of this unoccupied cellar, which would make installing a fire retardant ceiling very difficult. Number six, as an alternative to compliance with Article 3, Section 30, the multiple residence law, the applicant has installed a hardwired smoke and carbon monoxide detection alarm system interconnected from the basement to each unit individually, and it would provide early warning in the event of a fire-related emergency. Uh, finding number seven is the door into the basement is cladded with sheet metal, according to one of the exhibits, Exhibit C. We've seen a photo that shows a basement door that has sheet metal cladding. Um, <clears throat> it concludes the findings. <clears throat> With regarding to section, so it's determined the application for variance in chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 30 is hereby granted with the following conditions that the existing smoke and carbon monoxide detectors are installed located throughout the building as required by current code that the interconnected devices are provided as indicated in the provided plans within the petition. We reviewed those plans and we agree with those locations indicated. <clears throat> the condition number two, that the property owner shall have the city of Schenectady perform a formal test of the installed interconnected alarm system to ensure all alarms are properly communicating and installed. And number three, condition number three, that any entrance door and every door opening into any entrance hall, stair hall, or other public hall connected there within shall be self-closing. This concludes the conditions. The board finds that the proposed variance for section 30 will not substantially adversely affect the law's provisions for health, safety, and security. Strict compliance would entail practical difficulties, unnecessary hardship, or would otherwise be warranted because such would be unnecessary in light of alternatives, which without a loss and a level of safety achieve the intended objective of the law. I'll now poll the board with regard to section 30. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Or a second. Great. Those in favor say yay and those opposed say nay. <clears throat> Ms. Coons? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Ms. Ryder? Yay. Mr. Beringer? Yeah. And the chair also says yay, Mr. Bromo, so that's five yays, zero nays. And the variance for section 30 is granted. We will now address section 31 separately. So it was determined that the application for variance to, to chapter 61-B of the Consolidated Laws of New York, Multiple Residence Law, Article 3, Section 31, is proposed to be denied. <clears throat> the board finds that the door at the top of the stairs as shown in the exhibit is not adequate for fire retardant and shall be installed with a proper fire retardant door. And framing. framing. Do I have a motion from the board? I'll make a motion. Great to have a second. Oh, Great. I'll well, now call the board. Those in favor of the conclusion, the, uh, say yay. And those can I say nay. Ms. Coons? Yay. Mr. Ellis? Yay. Ms. Ryder? Yay. Mr. Beringer? Yay. And myself, the chairman, also says yay. That's five days, zero nays for that conclusion. And that concludes section 31. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, this decision is limited to the specific building and application before it as contained within the petition and should not be interpreted to give implied approval of any general plans or specifications presented in support of this application. That concludes the hearing for today. Thank you, everyone, for being on the call today, bearing with us. That's
it all for today. So let's go off the record.